Yes, here we go. We've got my big mate, James McPake. How you doing, mate? All right? All right. Probably going to be your most boring one. No on chance. Oh, no damn. chance, man. By the way, this is a site that will fucking hunt Dundee fans, isn't it? I'm not so sure. I'm telling you, I told you that. I think they liked you. No, they didn't. You can run. No, they did. You were just... We went through a wee bad spell. and But great to play with, as I told you. Just give you the ball of the time. Because I... <laughs> no, because I was rubbish on it, so it was either geek to you, Tom, or Gowser, so it was, it was great for me. We signed the same day, what a day for the club, eh? Aye, I remember walking in and seeing you, you think you were there with your brother, I can remember walking in and you, you had the gold Rolex on, I thought, fish boys, you must hear a bit about him, so I can't wait to get playing with him, and, and then you started talking to me and I'm, I went away going, I didn't know you, but I felt like I knew you forever. And then I went and away, and I came home, and I says, I hope I'm not sitting next to him. And what? You could Disney shut up. <laughs> First day in at pre-season, bang. Next day, <laughs> but, mate, what a corner that was. Who was it? Me, you, Jeebsy, Tomo, and uh, Jim McAllister, wasn't it? Right, it was good. Gowser a couple up as well. Yeah, uh, it was not it was a good dressing room actually, wasn't it? At the start, I liked that when, year, mate. It was a good laugh. First get in, it was. It How was did good. we pass the medicals, man? You were fucked as well, weren't you? Aye, uh, no, I hadn't played, and to be fair, I had. I had, I had a weird medical, the weirdest medical I've ever had actually. I got a phone call to go up, I had Dundee back to speak to you. So I went up and Paul says, oh, we're going to go and do a wee bit of running. What? I'd done the bleak pest. <laughs> For your medical? I hadn't even said, I hadn't even spoke about money. <laughs> right, mate, we're going to start on your early days. Came to it at Livingston. Well, I was going to say what was our use to it, but it must have been horrendous because they thought you were a centre forward. Aye, oh, mate. The worst centre forward ever. I, I was basically... <laughs> The same centre forward as I was as a centre back, which wasn't very good, but I could either it. I was actually quite quick before my injury, so I could run and I liked to tackle. But I, I can get on. I can genuinely remember Paul Lambert saying to me, "I'm fed up with you flicking it on for your sail and chasing it." <laughs> and, so, but you smashing up front. I was trying to like that. I didn't know anything. I don't, I don't know right. I ran about like things like that, and we had a good in the youth team. It was all right and good, and I scored the odd goal now and again, um, and. It was all right until, but I needed to, I need moved. Man. So who, who moved you, Lambert? No, it was Archie Knox, because we just had a big squad, and to be fair, Archie loved all that. See, he came in with Richard Goff, and he loved, like, just people smashing each other and training and all that, and it was just tackles, and he got the place gone, and we had too many players, so one day he says to me, look, I'm going to play you in a reserve game at centre-back. I think it started at training, it was doing all right. He says, I'm going to play you, done all right, blah, 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 and then, for their own, I, I, I used to play in the reserves as a centre back and get put on as a sub for the first team up front. Up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was good, and thank God he changed me, man. Or I, I certainly wouldn't be sitting here now. But what he's got there as well is good older pros. Uh, you had them as well at Livingston. Who was good for you, Marvin Andrews? Burton O'Brien was really good to, to all the younger ones. Yeah. Um, what well, advice and stuff like I, that? Although Burton was quite young mm. at the time, but he'd got his move, and it was a big move to Blackburn in the Premier League at the time. And then he'd come back up, but he was really good with like me and Scotty McLaughlin and that. He, Burton was one of the good ones. Um, going back through. Any assholes? Loads. Was there? Aye. Like, like, uh, and that. Then, and look, like, look, no so much. It was probably back to the way it was then. Like, I don't know why he sat and hammer people, but they, they were just the way the younger ones got treated. The mm. same way it was at, at Celtic, but no so much assholes, but they just didn't treat you very well. Derek Lally was great. Yeah. He was one that was great with the young ones, but there were certain ones like Roddy McKenzie just had no time for the younger ones. Mm -hmm. But come back to bite him in the ass because Roddy come back when all He's the were older. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> so there were me, Snoddy Dorns, Murray Davidson, and all that were all then playing in the first team and Roddy was a goalie. So it was kind of a bit of, well, we'll treat you the way you treat us. Mm -hmm. um, Love never, that. He's never spoke to us. So like, I think by the time Roddy, could, when Roddy left, whatever, by the time he came back, I was a captain. So it was just a kind of. Always had that in my head. Well, you were a bit of a knob to me. Probably know the right way to be. Uh -huh. but it didn't affect his own the picture or whatever, but we just didn't. I certainly didn't have that much respect for him in terms of the dressing room. Quite right, mate. Uh, right, Richard Goff came in. Big, gorgeous. We've had him on here. Some man, isn't he? He was good, actually, like, for me, because, again, he, he came in with Archie, obviously, uh -huh. and he, he would say that. Like, he would tell me to go and just, I want the, the first thing he does to, to tackle somebody. God, I was a striker. <laughs> He was going, it was all right. And, but but they must have seen that sort of something that, or they must have seen I wasn't very good up front, but I could maybe run and chase people a bit. Because I was quite quick. He gave me a new deal. I played a few games. He, he gave me my first start. No, he never did. It was Alec Cleland and, 
and Robbo the week before, Graham Robertson the week before. Um, it gave me that when they were in temporary charge, but then Goff played me the next week and we started me. And I got a few, a few starts under him, a few games under him. Um, but he put me on at centre half once against Big Hartson. It was Archie, I can remember Archie. Celtic were at Almondvale and I think they were only about, I can't, we'd need to look back, about 10 minutes to go. I think Big Hartson had scored one at a time and Archie said to me, right, just go and just. Man, Mark John Hartson, don't give him a kick. He scored a hat trick. <laughs> I walked He's off. so strong, isn't he? Oh, he was brilliant, man. And I walked off and Archie just says to me, hey, done well, son, but he scored two goals. <laughs> <laughs> and I had asked him for his strip. Next minute, the door chapped and it was the Celtic kit man. I can't remember what his name was at the time, whatever. But, uh, John Clark at doing the hat. for number 22. And I just seen Archie looking at me. <laughs> and just, oh, no. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. I get stripped. Big John had sent it in, so fair play to that. Um, was it hard for uh, Richard Goff at that time? Because Piers Flint was the owner. Was he not a bit of a madman as well? I but like, for what, for my remembering of like, or what I can remember of it was that Archie done a lot of it. Archie took the training and a lot of the training. Goff got involved in a lot of it. Goff was still fit by him. Aye, he was. But Archie was just, Archie didn't care. Like, the job was to come in and, and get, keep Livingston up and they done that and they were, I can remember, I can remember, Archie would just say it, so I think the rows were maybe with, with Archie for things not being done right, like if the players weren't getting the bonuses or whatever, because they had said that, so Pierce was, I remember one time, I can't remember if that was under Paul Lambert or, or Goff, it might have been Lambert, but he came in, is it Hurling, they play in Ireland, and <laughs> He came in with a hurling stick. Gen this is genuine. Well, so the boys are all sitting in the dressing room. He walks uh, in. He called a meeting because um, <laughs> we were getting beat. I think this was under Paul, Paul Lambert. And Paul wasn't it. Paul Lambert wasn't in the meeting, but Pierce wanted to have the meeting with the players, which was up to, he, he was paying the wages uh -huh. sometimes. Um, so he came in and he had this hurling stick. He says, you know what? I'd love to put you on a bag and just a bag that was big enough to fit. He's on hit. He's with this hurling stick. <laughs> and... We're all sitting there. Aye, right. I've so, so many senior boys you could see. I was terrified. I was only young. Uh -huh. And then uh, we had a boy, Gabor Vinci. Um, I think he actually played for Hungary. He was a Hungarian internationalist, I think. And he says, uh -huh. and see you, Gabor. I've got a, I've got a sponsor that's, that, that says he'll pay. So the next time you pull out a tackle, I fash of this hurling stick up your ass. <laughs> The sponsor will pay for you to go back to Bucharest. And Gabor put his horn up and done, boss, I'm not from Bucharest, I'm from Budapest. <laughs> <laughs> or the other way about, whatever one was what. <laughs> and that just, everybody burst out laughing and it just killed Pierce. Pierce <laughs> we were all gone. Like, what, what are you doing anyway? The chairman walking in saying you're wanting to hit your players well. What a hurling stick, ga Gabor. And to be fair, he, he probably. Wait, I love that he's got the boss to put his hand up and aye, correct him. Eh? Anyone else who just. Oh, yeah, I don't think he cared. He was on, but he was, again, then they were paying big money. He was on big money and he was a good player, to be fair. And to be fair, I can't remember him pulling out of many tackles because he was forever booting people. And <laughs> you, you, you might remember him, he had that long blonde hair, big long throw in, huh? Right. But he was, he, was, he was decent and. But that's what that's the, the the things that was going on at that club at the time. We were getting can you all right your team down and and we'll we'll, we'll oh, did, I, was that happening back then? Write your team down, we'll I, see who's I write your team down, we'll read it out. And he's gone we we can't do this. But the good thing we had some senior players about another one as well were they brought in Darius Dovchek. This is going on to when Mark Proctor was the manager, is the, right. the director of football. And we so I think we were in, the, we get relegated by then. Mark Proctor was a he was brilliant, different class, top coach. Him and Curtis Fleming, um, they were good. And that's when Snoddy, Johnny, and Griffiths was there and there about at the times as well. We had a good team. Uh -huh. um, so we, now, now I think it was against them, Fairman. So we come in, and <laughs> he's going. Mark Proctor didn't see him. The only time Darius Dovchek had come in, so he, basically hardly had any even met him. I don't know for whatever reason Pierce or whatever brought him in, but he was a direct, the new director of football at the club. So he's sitting and he's going through the full team at half time, and we're going, what's going on here? So he's saying, he's a this, he's a that, whatever. And Dave, so I'm sitting, I'm sitting here. Dave McKay's sitting there, and Dave just done fuck off, and Darry Stovchek turned round to me and done, who hey, you tell me to fuck off like that? And I'm like, I, 
I never tell you to fuck off. But I'm telling you to fuck off now. She went, and the place just erupted. She said, what are you doing in here anyway? Like, Did you say that to me? Aye, it's Monday day with you and then Dave started. And you've got Snoddy going, Dolan's is in the place. But it was the best thing that ever happened for Mark Proctor. Because he was never back in the dressing room. Right. And the, the good thing about, about Livy at the time was Vivian. Vivian Kyles was there. And Vivian was good, in my opinion. She, so I think me and Dave went to her and just says, look, that can't happen. That was undermining the manager and never seen him again, and that was it, so I think he became the director of football, he, he went back to Poland or whatever, but you never seen him, uh -huh. but, then, times, eh? but then he tried to sign me, Dorns and, and Dave, <laughs> and I, I still think it was to get us, to get us done, like get us out there, get and, and then get you uh, shot or something, so, so <laughs> uh, mad times, and then another big name mate, as you said, Paul Amber came in, must have been absolutely buzzing when you heard that a, a, a top player like him was getting, getting I was, I was buzzing, I was gutted a wee bit as well, because I liked, I liked Archie. Uh -huh. like, I liked Richard Goff as well, but I, I really liked Archie, but Lambert coming in, your European Cup winner, like top player, whatever. And we come in and, again, I started his first game as a striker up front, myself at Ibrox. <laughs> Did you? I should, fuck me. And I'm going, man, <laughs> Jesus. It's, and it was, it was the season they... Who were you up against? Sorry, up front of the again. Fan fans first get remember Josie Pierre, fan I'm fan and Big Marv. Was that it? was the two. Oh. Imagine that. We were playing high boys up, man. I'm ducking. Anyway, like running about. It was red hot. It was a member Scott McDonald scored for Motherwell the year before. Uh -huh. Rangers won the league, so yeah. it was the first game of the season. Flagging up, the place was bouncing, man. I think they won about four nothing. <laughs> Did you get a touch now? <laughs> no, no, I don't. So sixty minutes half. Um <laughs> But and I think that's when he was saying like, that was when he first noticed I was I maybe got a couple of flick ons and chased him. But, but still started he, that and I think he liked that that bit the running about. But he like, I played in a few reserve games with him, but he like, he trained a bit in that and I think it was only then I realized I, obviously he's a, a top top player, world class player, he won yeah. the Champions League, but see when you seen him in training he's amazing, and he was he? Like, wow. He's my favourite player as oh, the boy saying like. And he, he ended up playing for Livy like, in games. Did he? How did he play? Aye, because we were that bad and you must have been thinking, because he'd only retired for Celtic that season and he think, I, I need to try and help. Yeah. And, and he did help, to be fair, but he, I played in a, I can remember a reserve game and it was, we played Dundee United and Billy Dodds was still at Dundee United. <laughs> and this was the kind of thing Lambert would say, to me anyway, I don't know if he liked me or no, but I had a couple of conversations when I ended up, he went to Norwich and they were in the same league at Coventry at the time, and, but I'm going to be off cue here talking shite, but he, <laughs> He says to me, uh, uh, before the game, we're playing Dundee United in a, a reserve game when it was a, and Billy Dodge was playing. So I'm playing centre back at the time. Again, as I normally was in the reserves, and, and Billy Dodge was playing. Lambert came up to me, he said, I'm just going to tell you something. It was in front of the day. He says, go out and enjoy it today and that. And he says, but see if he runs away for you once, I'm releasing you. <laughs> And I, I'm looking at him and he could never tell, what, well, it was see, always the same, dry, what, aye. Uh, and I'm going, right, and he says, I'm fucking serious. He says, you see, if the club don't want to pay you off, I'll pay you off myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sitting going, I'm thinking to myself, Billy Dodge is a good player. <laughs> He's a top player, I know, man. and I'm in my head. You're shitting yourself every I'm, time he runs going, at you. Is he still, what, what's he like? I'm trying to go through my head. And, I was scared to ask him, is he, is he quick, is he in? But I was going out to a reserve game shite myself, thinking if Billy Dodge runs away from me once, I'm getting released. Uh, why can why you not make it work at Livy? Just players not good enough at that time. Um, fake, he's went on and I, I think he's had a really good career, um, but as a, as a coach and a manager as well. But I don't know if maybe coming in and he, he'd work with Martin O'Neill and the, the top players at Celtic and maybe coming in and expecting us to be able to do that. And we weren't a great team at the time either. Yeah. Um, and I think he got to the point where he, he maybe just thought, no, look, this isn't working at the minute. And to be fair, I think, I'm, if I remember right, he walked. He wasn't his act. He, yeah. he walked for, I think he just says, I'm not doing it right or whatever, but he went away and obviously learned for it and he's went and done great. But probably just, it was his first <laughs> job. He'd come straight out. Of, I don't even think he was doing much. I think he was still a player at Celtic. Yeah, right up until just went the straight in the job. You're right. Uh -huh. So that, that would have been tough for him. Um, I think he would admit that at any level, no matter how good you are as a player, I think getting into a first team dressing room would be tough, and maybe maybe that didn't help him. But because he's coaching and that was good, mm. like, he had some really good ideas, and I just think it was done to the players, if I'm honest. And then John Robertson came in, shite the bus. 
<laughs> Když si pár historie. Aj. Tři <laughs> dny ale mi. No, ale jsi nejsem moc jiný, boš, protože jdeš do toilet. A když jsi, to je mání do manažera, že mě líkne. Tam měl jsi jen vůbec nic. Aj, hej, the, the first time he done well as well up there, he won the uh, league, I think. And Robo was my coach in the youth team as well. Oh, was he right? Aj, so Robo, really good coach. Yeah. Um, when we were in so going back to when Jim and Davey and that were, were the manager, Robo was there. Some massive names, mate. A young kid, Lambert, Goff, Knox. John, John Robertson, Robertson. Really good coach, enthusiastic, and he came back as a manager. And that, that was difficult, I think, because again, going back to what it was like, is he, the way they would treat you as youth players, like the skirting board wasn't clean, so you were into five. No, it was Evans, like, and then you'd, you'd come back and he would be, he'd be, the manager then, and still probably looking at me, Dolan, Snoddy, whoever, as your young kids. Mm. And, but he had to play as in the first team. And so that, that took a wee while, but in the end, uh, and to be fair, he had the balls to, to play me at centre back in the league, and then give me the chance for that. So so he was good. good I just think that. he's a great manager, but must be the only manager in history that would send Snoddy on loan to still an Albion. <laughs> they didn't get on, did they? <laughs> no. Um, I think you're right in that. that that's... No, I'm, I don't think I'm overstepping the mark here. Um, I, I don't want to come on and criticise other managers because it's my job's hard enough and I've been criticised enough and rightly so because at times I've been really poor, but why would you send Snoddy on loan anywhere? <laughs> Never mind, it's still an album and we're at Livingston. Could you believe it when you got... No, no. But could you see it coming, like, with, with the arguing quite a bit? Well, to be fair, they were arguing, Snoddy offered them a square go. Did he? <laughs> um, Aye, in the dressing room. <laughs> says, like, right, one then, like, an argument happened, the snoddy says, right, one then, me and you, square go. Says, and if you don't want to see me, if you don't want to see me, not fuck out you in the dressing room, I'll take you into your office and we'll have a square go. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, that, tremendous. That, that, was, that was snoddy. And snoddy was being serious. But I just think he got to that point where he, he probably couldn't believe he wasn't playing. Mm. And we couldn't believe he wasn't playing. But look, managers have that with players and... He went and he got Sterling Albion promoted and I, I went to the final and it was, I think it was Snoddy and David Bingham up front and the, for the ones that, can you remember Bingham? Bingham a player as well, well mate. What a and, player Bingham was. I know, and like, because he was at Livy even when, when they were in the Premier League when they finished third and I got fuck what, Sterling Albion, we would take the two of them Did back. They? And the two of them are playing for Sterling Albion, the league below us, but for, nobody can believe that for Snoddy, that was for me the way, the way that, that came about in the way Snoddy got treated at the very end at Livy for me was just madness because you look at what he's went on and done and Snoddy was great in the dress, Snoddy was no, there were no badness, nah. Snoddy was brill <laughs> just brill brill the Aye, and, but he was serious and he trained hard and he was, even then he was a good, a good, I was going to say, could you tell that he would do what he's done? No, no, I couldn't tell he would go and like move for four, six or eight million pound or whatever because yeah. you can, but you could tell the same way I think like I said about Griffiths when he was young Dorans. I always thought Dorans was the one. Like, you know, I that, loved Dorans when he was younger. And he for me like, and it's not the two of them were, they were brilliant. And if I had to I picked one that would have went on and played as much as they have of both of them having the Premier League, I'd have said Dorans just for whatever everybody's got a preference, but mm. could have done it. Uh, right, just last but on Livingston, mate, was it a shame to see how far they'd fallen when Obviously, you were, you were there when they were third, they're paying the big wet wages. When you leave, you see the state the club's in. Was it, was it sad to see? Aye. It was, it was. But I think it was all down to their own mistakes as well, a lot of it. And, because it, it was a good club with real good people. Um, but there you go, you had Robert Snodgrass, you sold to Leeds with a, with a sell-on clause and two mad Italian owners come in and, and sell the sell-on clause to... Or that might have been Dorn. One of them anyway, yeah. they had a sell-on clause. 30% to, I think it was Snoddy, whatever one of them anyway, but they had a sell on close of 30% and they end up selling that for 10 grand just to get some money in. Oh my Snoddy God. moves for whatever he moves for. So have I got sympathy for them as a club, for the fans, aye? Uh, but no for, no for the owners. Like the owners were, the Italians were, like they were mayhem, man. Like, any stories about that? I don't know. Like they, we'd get our wage slips and said, yeah, these gold boys are getting paid and the wages would never come in. And <laughs> Roberto Landi came in and he he came out in the paper and said we would live in the Champions League in three years. We were reading the paper. <laughs> I mean, and it got to the point with me and Dave Mackay. We we yeah. weren't, we, and this isn't right. Um, our attitudes weren't right there, but we weren't getting paid. So we had kind of our heats had gone, 
and all done my shape all the time. Oh, fuck me. But, and, and it had all had to start, and you know, the Astro at the back of Livy. <laughs> so it would be like, he had a wee, I can't remember the guy's name, Victor Bellini or something, but to be fair, I think this boy was a player, he's 600 games in Serie A for teams and all that, where Roberto Landy was a goalie that played junior or something. But they had, so that we Victor would chip the ball in, and we had to, so what we had to do, they would shout if it was a clearance or if we had to take it down and play a phase. Yeah. So if he'd shout clearance, and me and Dave, we'd boot it out of the fence. And it, like, that's the point it got to. It got one, one story as well, because Lee Griffiths was here, so they had me, Dave, Lee Griffiths and Murray Davidson, and it was rumoured teams were looking at us, and one month we were the only ones that got paid. And, like, Just to keep you happy, like? Aye, but we're walking into the dressing room and all the boys, no paid again, and I'm going, I got paid. <laughs> and horrible. Dave's going, I get paid too. Oh, so we had to go and look, this isn't right, and uh, it wasn't, it was a sh- it, they were an absolute shambles. But I'd signed that deal, and so I'm looking and going, I'm not getting paid here. So I, th- I phoned, I think I phoned the physio or what, and I said, he's like, I've, I've got diarrhoea, I'll not be in tomorrow. It was wee Keegan Jacobs, I got him to bring my boots. Uh-huh. He came and met me at, at Deer Park, flew down to Coventry. So I'm sitting in Coventry, and I live the live physio's phone, how are you feeling and all that? I'm feeling all right, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then eventually the deal got done, as long as I said that, signed a non-disclosure that I can't speak about the Italians, which doesn't matter now, I don't know what they're doing anyway. Um, <laughs> they own the Tony Macaroni, didn't they, but Livingston now? No, they, no, they own it. No, I'm not sure. No, they the fuck not, but they used to take us up there for a pre-match, I know they, they still do that, but they used to do that, and mate, we stayed in a hotel for a month, for pre-season, in Livingston. <laughs> but I swear, because that's what they've done, every day was sneaking out. Imagine staying like, I love hotel for the long what, 20 minutes away? Dave Mackay stayed 8 miles through the hotel and he, they, that's what they done in Italy, they went in Munch training it's camp, you probably heard uh, about the cario, uh, mate, and, so we had, and the captain, I was the captain, nobody could get up and leave, but in, until the captain had finished. Uh, we so done that as well. Dave's sitting, he's like, fuck this man, any chance you hurrying up? And I'm going, did I mean hungry? And, and, and in the end I had to go and say, this isn't it right, and uh, whatever, but... Um, so we're at one, so I, I went down and they're phoning me, you're right, and whatever, and blah blah blah, signed the deal, and they, they done as long as he signs a non disclosure. So I had to send a fax, but the fax was obviously coming through for Coventry's stadium. <laughs> when you'd said you'd had diarrhea and you were in the house. Aye, so I had to send it to my sister, my sister had to <laughs> doctor it, send it to Livingston, and then if I, if I gave up my last month wages, that so I, I accepted that I, I hadn't even paid for three months, and they were wanting me to give up my last month's wages. So I says, aye, that's fine, but I was, I was I just wanted to do it, um, because we weren't getting, and I felt terrible because there were boys here, no getting wages, and, and it went on like that, and and, and they, they they ruined that club for a while, and it's, it's good to see that it's back, and back then, but they were, they were an absolute disgrace. And Right, mate, Chris Coleman signed you, I think he's a, he's a ledge man, aye, did you get that initial impression, how was he when you first met him, obviously he was a centre half as well, wasn't he? Aye. Yeah. How was he when you first met him, impressive? Aye. Beautiful, wasn't he? Like he's, ah, handsome man, isn't nah, he? He's like, we, we had a club, normally you get into football clubs and all the players are the main men and that, but and we had some big hitters at the time, but yeah. he, he was the main man, um, in my opinion, in there, just for the way he carried his cell, he was top, top man, um, genuine guy, honest, hard, he could... Well, be, as in hard, what, going through people? Or uh, t- when he needed to, and I never see, I seen it once at me, and genuinely, like, like, talk about being scared of Davy Hay, I was scared of him. Um, what did he say? Like, just not fucking good enough? Aye, but it was me and Richard Wood. You know, did you know play with Wood? Richard Wood, uh-huh. Playing against Leicester, and that was a big derby. That's your biggest derby. 2-0 doing it at half-time. Doing it at half-time, and I think I've told you the story. When he's, so he comes, and he was good with the centre-backs. Always really good, because he was a centre, and he would always stick up for us, seeing that like, he'd come in, and if it wasn't for your centre-backs, he would be fucking... 3-0 doing or whatever, but this game at the two is we're, we're poor. I think Andy King has scored the two of them. We were getting, we're getting battered. He took his belt, undone his belt. He does us to fucking show some bollocks of pay. He's look at he's he's are getting bullied. I'm sitting, he was screaming right in my face. And were his balls in your face? No, no, <laughs> no. They, were, they, they, they covered them, I think, but they were that big. Yeah, no, he just kind of done it for the effect. Uh-huh. Show some fucking bollocks, you pair. I'm going, wow. And because I'd never been, I'd never had a rollicking off him. Yeah. And he's, he was, he was, 
that and we ended up drawing two each. I scored in the game, but I, I had to do something, man. Because <laughs> I, I, I was, I was scared. No, but he was brilliant. Aye, great. But Steve Keen was his assistant. Uh, great coach as well. Steve was Steve Keen a good coach? Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Top top coach. And I felt I felt sorry for Keen. Oh, see when he went to Blackburn and he got all that because he had dead after owners as well. Remember? Yeah, the Venkies are uh-huh. And. And Keno got a load of a load of stick for that, but what, what a coach he was. And the sums up tell him what happened when he got sacked. <laughs> um, look, in this, that, that, uh, there's a reason for this story, and if Coventry fans end up here, they'll think it's a fuck about it, wasn't it? Because we play, we actually, I think it was that season, by about March, we went on a great run, and Cardiff were in six, which was the playoffs, and we were, I think we were a point behind Cardiff, and we played them on a Tuesday night. We went 1 0 up, so we'd have jumped them. Yeah. We went 1 0 up, they won 2 1. Um, so they ended at that one point, then became the four point swing. And we won, it was in seven. Yeah. So that was kind of <coughs> close to think we're going to make the playoffs here. We came down and it finished and whatever we finished. But I think it was what the last game of the season, another game for both teams. And Chris had played, he played a few of the kids and whatever, and we get battered 3 0. I think it was 3 0, 3 or 4. And we'd end the season awards that night, which all clubs do, so it was fine. Like, yeah. We had no idea that, that this was going to happen. And we all get a text, a meeting, kind of had to come out of training ground the next day. So we all come in and he was there. And Ray Ransom, who was the chairman at the time, he spoke first and he says, look, I'll, I'll go on record and say I was one of the board members that voted against this. I, I didn't want this to happen. Um, I still believed in, in Chris, blah, blah, blah. And but Chris Coleman just came in and says, now look, Lads, I'm leaving. Well, they're sacking me. Thanks for everything. We were all gutted, but genuinely, because yeah. it, it was our fault. It mm-hmm. wasn't it. It wasn't the manager's fault. So, at that point, we're just sitting about the train, shaking horns and that, and, and blah blah blah. And he must have just thought, you know what? F- fuck this. He thought he'd done, and he had done a good job. Uh-huh. Celt Scott Dance, Celt Danny Fox, Celt Kieran Westwood, Celt Aaron Gunnarsson was about to sell Ben Turner. All these kick types of people. He brought all these players in, mm-hmm. um, him and his scouting department. And because and I think that because of that game, the board panicked. And you look at the state of the board, it's still the same board. Yeah. Taking away Ray. Ray was good. Ray invented Prozone and all that, I think. Did I he might know? be wrong in that, but he brought that out. Um, and he put a lot of money into Coventry. And Chris Coleman was his appointment. So I think he was a bit gutted. And walking out the door, he says, I think me and Ben were walking. He says, you just fancy a beer. Ben Turner, um, he said, aye, he said, get, get a few of the boys, a few of the staff are going to go and, go and, go and get a beer, so, oh God. so I'm phoning Don and saying, right, I'm Don, the manager's been sacked, I can see it, it's towards Sky Sports News, whatever, so I said, I'm, I'm great, I'm going to go out for a beer, said, what are you talking about, you're going out for a beer, like, it doesn't sound right and people say it's unprofessional, but he's just been sacked, I don't so, think that, I don't think that's so it wrong, I think that's brilliant, so, end of season, and, so you got, there were four or five, uh, maybe more than that, about six years maybe, Six or seven of the, the players. Beer? So we went to a wee beer garden that we went in and he got the, we got the place shut off. I spoke to Ben Turner last night about this and Sonny, Sonny Coleman is Chris's boy that he's an agent now. Right. I said, do you think Chris would mind me telling this story? And Ben says, no, he'll, he'll know better. Um, so they got the pub shut, wee beer garden at the back, Lucas Djokovic, I think it was, it was a Duke had the guitar, just like Slaney was sitting there. Uh-huh. So the Duke sat and playing the guitar, we were all sitting singing. And at the start it was weird because we're sitting, like, we're all sitting drinking, like, and it was dead somber, and uh-huh. they the, the gaffers like, ah, come on, boys, Live it up. let's make a day of this. So <laughs> we're sitting, and gaff, stop calling me gaffer now, I'm sat. <laughs> and and folk are phoning him, and he's like, fuck him. <laughs> Love that. Fuck him. Boys, we're having, right, phone's off, come on, everybody, phone's <laughs> off. So we're sitting, and Right, what song, whatever, we're all sitting singing. But nobody, nobody could see because the pub was shut, but I think that just told you, it was all the, he had his staff there, like the physios were there, the people were there, all the people that I think he that he liked and trusted were there that day, and, and we, we sat for whatever, all day with him, and, and that, that, that's something for me, Chris Coleman up as a man, that it wasn't for the sake he wanted to get in the piss, he wanted to take the lands out that he thought done well for him, yeah. for the one last time, because he wasn't going to get to do it. Brilliant. And just just a, a genuine great guy. What about when you and the boy turned over in the lift and he thought he was all gone out and he was devastated nah. that he <laughs> I can't tell that for a while because folk will think, but no, we were in the, we were in the lift and we're playing. 
It's my biggest regret, and I tell you, Dawson, this as well. Holly Willoughby was in the lift. Not at the same time, but she came in the lift. So you know what it's like. You go for your pre-match or whatever. We're in London, we were playing QPR. So we're staying in a fancy hotel near Heathrow, I think. And it was when she they were doing whatever. So don't know what if dancing in ice or like whatever she was doing at the time. Uh-huh. And she was she was in the hotel, and some of the, the crew for them were in it. So we were going down for it was ever a pre-match or something. And she so me and Ben were in the room, and she's in the lift. And, she, and she was lovely, and obviously you see her, you're fucking blah, brilliant, and she, we need to try and bump into her later on. <laughs> so I think I was either engaged or married to Dawn at the time. I'll phone in Dawn saying, by the way, see if I get the chance here. <laughs> um, so I st- still say that that's my biggest regret, that, that I somehow, me or it's Ben's as well, that we never got to... Meet Holly Willoughby. No, we, no, we, we met her, we never got a chance to speak to him, try and <laughs> get a <out>. hold of <laughs> um, Brilliant. Uh, just finally on commentary, uh, Eddie Bifroyd came in. That guy loves to leather the bone. I played against his teams, but he used to bang it, man. Nah. Was it similar with commentary? Aye. Did that not suit you, nah? Well, it suited, it suited, it suited me. <laughs> oh, it suited me doing the ID. Uh-huh. That's how I ended up doing all right for him when so I got in. So how come in. you left then? But I eventually got in the team and, and done well. But it was that. It was like you were nearly out of pass. It was. It, it was. You get it out your feet and you had a diag. Uh-huh. And and that's what you had to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> you genuinely were nearly out of. And you had the diag going to Platy and we were up behind it. On but, the but who who might say that was Ryan because he got Watford promoted to the Premier League. I said, there's no right or wrong way to play with it, you play with what you've got. He's England under 21 manager now. Now I know it's changed now, because he's, he'll, he'll not be allowed to just get it and wallop it at England. <laughs> um, so, but no, but there were a lot of good things about Eddie, and I got in the team and then, I, I, when I was in, the, I done my back and I, I, I couldn't... Too much horse young man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I done my back, um, because he done I <laughs> no no I did a knee for big Rory Fowler against Stitchwick on New Year's Day again another stupid story that like, like, should have been addressed if it wasn't for unlocked for me or unlock, me being unlucky uh-huh. first of January or second of January you know how you do the double headers down there yeah where it's you play maybe you play you play the Saturday then and you Monday, play the Monday uh-huh. so playing up switch so I'm hyper extending knee into the what, no one of the ones yeah. that's here so played the last five minutes I'm doing Lee Cardley's coming great guy best guy ever oh, what a player so, so, oh, top player so, top guy as well saying to me come on get up get home with it I think Car- if Carlos was telling me go home with it uh-huh. like where he'd play so I'm, I'm getting through this get home that night with the full family down for hug, it was what, New Year hug uh-huh. many times so they all came to the game and they they were all in the party but we were we were only in for a recovery the next day but I'm sitting going I'm saying to my da I said, see by the way. He said, I can see the physio. So I went in with Michael. Ah, it's just a bit tight. But we only went to the pool because we were playing the ne- next day again. Yeah. So we were away. We went in recovery travel. So I'm up to Barnes and I'm going, back. killing me, man. But appearance money and all that. I was in the team. Go, I'll go away. Yeah. So I got on the, done the warm up. I'm running through and every time I'm sprinting, I'm getting a big pain down my hammy. Oh, I'm going, I didn't it. See, I'm saying to Michael, what's, Michael, what's going on here? She says, right, see how you go in the game? Because I'm still hinting again. I, I've, I've left all my family in the house to travel to Barnsley. Uh-huh. I'm not missing out on this appearance nah. money. And then if we win, this win bonus as well. Being selfish. Yeah. But fuck it, that's what, that's what you date for, is it? You date for to try and put, <laughs> being horrible again, to put a roof over your head. Uh-huh. So I'm going, right, I'm all, I'm all the way up here now, so I'll get a go. And, out and, and I genuinely, but that, that's been a bit dark. Get a go. And we've been, we've been. I knew yeah. it, this was bad. Uh-huh. No playing was bad, but missing your stag do, man. You, your pals went on your stag do, yeah. didn't <laughs> um, I because of that back injury. So I can remember going down, it was, I got done in May, and that was talking to the surgeon, and we're going, um, right, he's, where are you going on holiday and stuff? And we think we Vegas and St. Lucia or something booked for the honeymoon. Right. So he said, nah, you're not going. I'm back with the two pound in that honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we're sitting and I'm, I'm going on no. Next week we're going to Magluff for my stag do. So I go, what about, well, going to Spain. And I, anywhere in Europe's fine for your honeymoon. Done, right. I said, what about going to Spain next week? Done, you minding me up? I'm, I'm operating on you tomorrow. 
So I, oh no, so into the chat to the boys. It wasn't the WhatsApp, it was the Blackberries again, mm -hmm. I think. Lads, look, I can't, I can't go and I stagged her. And they're all right and right, that's fine, we're cancelling it and all that. I got out and I phoned the, my best man, I done, you can't cancel it. I says, he's what pays your money, just go. Mm -hmm. So they all get the, the Coventry shop with face masks. So they all, they all went with the face masks <laughs> and done all the stuff and... I was getting pictures and all that, I'm killing the line out of my box. Oh, so mate, that's the worst, man. It was a shambles. So I says to I Don right away. Because she, she was all right, she had her hand down my bay and all that. And so I says, but next year I'm in a stag do. So I, think I, I must be one of the only guys that, that had his stag do after he was let? married. <laughs> <laughs> See, to be fair, all the boys still came. Who, all the same boys that went in the first I, one came again? Aye, I don't think... I think an extra couple. <laughs> <laughs> Just the first one was that good. I think the first one was better than the second one, to be fair. For the I know. I we, man, we done, we just done the same. Um, <laughs> we went Dorns. Dorns was there, aye. Footballs, Dorns, Big Ben, Ben Turner. Um, we Stephen Weir. That, oh, we Weir, yeah. It was another one. He was one of your good mates. That Libby with me, aye. Still, still one of my best mates. Um, so that, that, the aim, and then all my, all my mates, and I think MDLs. Did you not get chucked out the hotel? I don't know how we never. <laughs> Genuinely. The only thing you weren't allowed to do in this hotel, I can't remember, is it the Real Barracuda or something, they might be wrong, but it was an all-inclusive, right? But <laughs> the only thing you couldn't do, genuinely the only thing you couldn't do was take a Lilo in the pool. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Some do take a Lilo, boy, get that out, or you're getting flung out, sign yeah. an agreement, so you get a warning. So Dorn's come up with this fucking brilliant idea, didn't he, one day? So you're like, come here. So we're all down at the pool, it's whatever. I can talk about the Dorns, I, play, I know he's a, I'm his man here now, but this was when he was my team, my uh -huh. mate. Um, so it's different, and we're going back 10 years, so I'm quite happy talking about him doing this, but he, come here, what is it? I, said, I go to these suits, what are you talking about? He had them off suits, see uh -huh. the thing that, he says, we'll put them on, we'll just start running around about the pool and see if the lifeguards can catch us, <laughs> see if they know what we're doing. So I'm right, brilliant. <laughs> Genuinely, he had to fix mine, I had to fix his. You know, the, the ones I mean? Uh -huh. but not even... You're, Can I see your face, your full face? It's, 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 everything's uh -huh. covered, right? So, <laughs> we're walking. So, walking out of our room, all the boys were up. Or a couple of them were up anyway, some of them were down at the pool. So, my daft mate, Kapu, he sees us. <laughs> I think, I think it's a good laugh. He's got a fire ex he grabs a fire extinguisher. But it's one of the ones that, it's, it's no water, it's no foam. I think it's like the powdery stuff. If you're dry, uh -huh. <laughs> It comes out, it starts scooting this fire extinguisher. Me and Don's can't breathe. We, we can't see, we can't breathe. So we're sprinting about this hotel. The, the full, the, all this stuff, all the blitz to the balconies are open. All this stuff's coming out, all the, the folk at the pool are looking up, they think the hotel's going <laughs> fire. Oh, I genuinely thought I was going to die, and so did, so did he. They done it, I think Ben Turner room. <laughs> well, that's what we were walking by. <laughs> His door was off. Oh, his gear. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> covered. <laughs> and it looked like you'd walked into a scene out of film that, I don't know, where the full place had just been burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 all this stuff. So we like, that shit. So eventually, like, we got, we got it ripped off. We're going to kill Kapu. Ben's going to kill Kapu. Because all his gear ripped his full room. <laughs> the full four four. He'd had some good gear as well, Ben Turner, eh? <laughs> it would have been deer stuff, <laughs> eh? <laughs> he's thrown it off the balcony into the pool because he's raging. <laughs> and he's a unit, eh? And he was proper raging. And eh, so we eventually got all that. Oh, Kapu's you, man. We're going to get fucked out. Everything. Full four floor was ruined. At the hotel, wow. Why, oh, genuinely, you wouldn't believe. I wish I had pictures of it, but it was everywhere. And are you standing in a suit or have you got this off at this time? Oh, I, I don't, I don't, don't say to rip mine off. And I well, well, we couldn't breathe, we, we couldn't see what we we're running into doors for that. We couldn't see it. Oh, what, what was happening? So he, he's having a goat kapoo. I'm here, I think he might have been lying in the flare trying to breathe. I'm here, a goat kapoo. Ben's thrown all his gear off, off the balcony because he's raging. Next minute, security guards are coming up. Like, oh no, I think we're only a day in. Uh -huh. God, fuck. Well, that's us, we're done. Right, so they come up, they says, right, could the lead person that booked it? I think, fun, lucky enough, that was Kapu anyway. So he goes down. So we're like, right, boys, we better. We're going to need to go and find somewhere else to stay here because we've got another four days of this. But we can't be doing stupid stuff. So when we go to this next hotel, Kapu comes up like that. Hold on, what is it? Oh, we're getting a two hundred and fifty dollar fine, a uh, two hundred and fifty euro fine, and it's to pay to clean the place. 
and we've to sign a, a letter saying that we'll not do anything else. So you've just let a fire extinguish your ass. We've basically wrecked the floor of the hotel. Not wrecked it, but you've you have wrecked it basically, Kapu. Uh-huh. And all, all of today is to pay two fifty euro. They say the same fine if you took a, a live one. <laughs> 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 so that was it. So we went down. We went down and sunbathed. The, the wee cleaners went in, and it, to be fair, it, we felt bad. So we're all like, right, let's chip some money in for the clean. Because the hotel will get the two hundred and fifty. Uh, we, we gave the cleaners all the, the, the whatever we had chipped in between us on. Honestly, within two hours, the rooms were sparkling. <laughs> I'm going, going, what what kind of hotel is that? Is but. I was scared. Amazing, man. Oh, genuinely scared uh, in that, because like, I couldn't see. Imagine you and Dorn's like, died. Because <laughs> Kapoor let off a fire <laughs> thing. But imagine the story, like, but what, how'd it happen? They were in a morph suit. Fucking <laughs> hell, man. And that's in, now I'm having to manage him as a player. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I'm just glad it's no Kapoor I'm having to manage. So we'll talk about Hibs now. When did you first hear the, their interest? I'd imagine there'd have been a few teams wanting you. Hearts. Well, the other one. Don't forget one. Arts and family, aye, and Hibs. Um, what happened? Just an agent, your agent just phoned you and says? Aye, but I, and I spoke to Jim McIntyre, spoke to Pat, the Hearts one at the time, and they'll say this is bullshit, I know they will go bull and hammer it, wasn't they? But Hearts at the time when I looked, they probably had the better centre back, so I'm thinking, I need to make sure where I'm going here, I need to play. Yeah. Who was the Hearts manager at the time? been Paolo Sergio? It would have been, aye. It was all through Alan Preston. Right. Um, so he'll. If, if, if they don't believe that story, that, that's genuine, there were an interest there um, to go and loan to Hearts, to go and loan to Hibs, to go and loan to Dunfermline. Jim Leishman phoned me, Jim McIntyre phoned me, Leish was back at Dunfermline at the time, and I don't know what capacity. But I, I looked, so I looked through it, I would have been confident to go and play at Dunfermline, I was confident to go and play at Hibs. Um, I wasn't so much at the Webster and Zalukas, I think, at the time, and I'm going, it might be, aye, it mm-hmm. might, it's touch and go, well. Hearts fans will be on, on this saying you know, I would need them in their bench, which is <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, that's, that's fine for them. Um, but I, I, I looked at it and I thought, nah, it's not even a, a choice. Mm. Um, you got to Hibs, didn't you? I need a respect to them firmly, yeah. and I, I mean that wholeheartedly, but a chance to go to Hibs. Um, Can you believe how big a club Hibs was? No, no. And that's why I went back, because uh-huh. right away and I go up and Sent half my first game. Did you? Mm-hmm. Nah, no, Ibrox. Great start. Um, but just the training ground, the stadium, all the stuff. Like, it was a proper club. Like, the Coventry was a proper club. Yeah. So was Hibs. And you know, in Scotland, there's no many. Mm. Um, I've got training grounds that have got stadiums of the, of the way Easter Road is and, and stuff like that. And the way they kind of treat you. So I thought, oh, I quite like this. Um, but didn't get after a great start. So they probably didn't quite like me at the start. Um, how was it? How, how did you find Pat Fenland? You liked him, didn't you? Brilliant, genuinely brilliant. Because he um, gets quite a bad mm-hmm. rep, didn't he? Aye, but look, you go and ask Lee Griffiths what Pat Fenland done for his career, and it'll be nothing. But Lee's actually done it. I've read the, the interview. It was years ago, but Lee done a bit. If it wasn't for Pat, and I was in it all, and we don't need to go into that because it's it's going doing things that doesn't need spoke about probably. Um, but ask Lee what Pat done for his career. Ask Paul Hanlon, Louis Stevenson, ask all the, the people that have done well for Hibs what they thought about what yeah. they thought about Pat. There'll be some be like everybody, um, that didn't like him, but great. Um My only thing against him is Specky in it. You should have put contact in. <laughs> Would you agree? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Klopp gets away with it. I suppose he does, uh, uh, you were given the captaincy pretty much straight away. Did that worry you though? A guy First coming game? Around? That, that sent half captain. <laughs> did he? Did he? But did he explain to you why he was giving you the captaincy? No, he asked me. He just he, he says, "Do you think you could you could you could handle this?" I says, "Aye." I says, "I don't have any issue with that." But cause I, had, I, I was when Stephen Wright wasn't he playing at Coventry. I was a captain under Chris Coleman. So Stephen Wright was at the Liverpool. He's at Dundee, but you know, isn't he? No, that's, oh, that's a, a different Stephen. Uh, Wright, Stephen, sorry, the, yeah. the fullback. Oh, the fullback, the skinhead. Aye, was he Coventry in that as well? Scored, look at him. I think he scored the goal in the Champions League for Liverpool, but yeah. he was Coventry's captain. At the time, but when he didn't play, I was a captain, so I don't know if Pat had seen that. I'd been Livingston captain at your age, I don't know, but trained for two days and come in and he, he pulled me and he says, You're right, but he didn't say, Can you handle that? He says, You're right with doing this. Did you see that there wasn't really, is that what they were missing? Maybe a leader in that team? I am. Um, I'm missing a lot. And Pat was trying to fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, but. We had Gary O'Connor and we had Lee Griffiths. 
we you don't got a chance. Aye, you, with Paul Hanlon there, you had Wee Lewis, so there was a basis, but uh, look, I think the, the place was low at the time. Um, where we were in the league, it was it was a proper relegation battle for January. Well, I think when I joined, we were maybe bottom. Again, with Dunfermline, it was touch and go every week. It was play one, they went above us, and and it wasn't the playoff. It was just the, the team goes down kind of thing. So for a team like Hibs to be fighting it out, I know they ended up Tidkin down. Yeah, but we went down, and that's a, a, full, a full another story and a full other reason to go into people's faults. But um, when I went. Leadership, I don't know. I felt I felt for Paul a wee bit because Paul had been given the captain said, don't know who from. Paul oh, Hanlon uh, still was, quite young. I thought it was Colin Calderwood. And, and that's a big club. And now Paul does it now and he does it great, but that's a big club when things aren't going well to and when you're the captain, it's the burden's on you. You're they're the first one you come for. So for him as a young kid to a big Hibs fan, I felt for him. So big Gaz was Gaz was a, a decent enough leader in terms of in the dressing room. Vocal on that, huh? so I, I don't Probably think a that. load of shite what he was talking about, he was vocal on huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nah, I'm nah, I like it, I love guys. So they are, and he, he's a good player. Um, really good, obviously a good player, you see the, the career he had, so that's why it annoys me that, that people look at that and say, that, that was this and that was that, but obviously it goes back to one or two games, and, and I get that as well, but it, it needed a, it probably just needed a shake up, yeah. and that's what Pat thought, I'm going to shake this up a wee bit, and, Give them a shot by making somebody I've brought in the day, uh-huh. the captain. And did Gaz or I, like Gaz obviously been a Hibs legend, did he have any problems with you being the captain? Was there, was there any never said that? No, at the time I think he did say on, on here he was a bit annoyed or something. Um, that he never got it? Because Gaz was doing it. I think it was going between Gaz and... I don't know if Paul was still doing it, but Ian Murray was... Ian Murray wasn't fat, but I think, right. and then, I think Gaz had maybe said a bit, which I can get as well, but well, I had the issue. I, look, I wasn't there to, to please people or... I wanted to, and this again, this is before I, I realised how much I, I loved that club, that I was there to get fit to go back and play for Coventry in the, in the Championship. And so I that was your first thought when you went to Hibs? Yeah, absolutely, but then I quite quickly went, nah, this is a place for me, if if it could work out. Yeah. So, but at the start, I was not caring, like, like they were saying, and he's a captain, how is he, how the fuck, somebody that's walked in, the manager chose it, not me, Yeah. Um, I went out and... Made an asset, get sent half at Ibrox, we get beat four in the house. So. What did Pat say to you after that game? Anything? No, I think he was moaning at the ref because he, he says I shouldn't have been sent half for my second booting, but oh, he, never, he never said anything to me. But the next week we played Kilmarnock in the Scottish and without talking myself up, I had one of my better games for Hibs. Yeah. Um, so I quite, but I had to, or I, I probably wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been playing for Hibs. Every day was just a a different story for, for Gaz, what he, was the story, he, what he was doing, and I, I loved his company, to be fair, I liked him, and, and you know what, and people, I think he got a bit of a hard time after the, after the, the cup final that I'm sure you're going to talk about, but it really did hurt people like him, yeah. like, and I, I know it's easy to say, and, but he, and, and you see the, the, the things that come out directly after the game and things are raw, but i seen it first hand, and it, it, it got to a lot of them, like yeah. your Paul Hanlon, Holy Stevens, and big guys, it, it did, it hurt them, mm. it g- genuinely did. I'm not saying that it didn't hurt me, it, it did hurt me, because by then I, I was fully into Hibs, but yeah. there were boys on loan that, in my opinion, didn't give a fuck, mm-hmm. uh, genuinely. We'll come to that, right. But just uh, his strike partner as well, Lee Griffiths. Come on, give us your best Lee Griffiths stories, what a boy he is. So you've known, you've known him for, as obviously as a kid at Livingston, to then go and play with him again at Hibs. Was he exactly the same as he was as a young kid? Aye. What, daft? In a good way. Uh-huh. Um, what kind of story you want? A serious one? A funny one? Or... Anything? Look, Lee's, and I've fought this fight for years with him. He went through a stage when the media hammered him and he couldn't do anything for he was doing this and their griff. Well, here, here's one, for example, that I, I, I do get. I'm sitting on a bus at, we're sitting, <laughs> we're sitting at the Marriott you to meet. So we trained in the morning. We we're going to Aberdeen to play Aberdeen. So you could go away and have the afternoon. We trained, we'd done our session in the morning, meet at the Marriott at four o'clock to travel to Aberdeen for pre-match to stay Friday night playing the Saturday. So I'm sitting and he's big mate, look. Look. Is it Clark? Clark guy. Uh-huh. I think it, it was either a tweet, it would have been a tweet back then. I don't think Instagram was about um, jazz, it's look, this is my number, can you phone me? So I'm sitting, we're sitting on the bus. You're sitting by Lee Griffiths? No, Lee's not on the bus. Right, okay, Lee's sorry. late. Right. <laughs> right. So, so I'm sitting going, Pat, 
his mates just text me saying, can I phone him? Ah, that's fuming. You better fucking phone him then. I'm going on, no, what, what's, what's happened here? <laughs> so I phone him. Uh, Lee's been arrested, or he's been lifted. Right, what for? Um, stealing. What? Stealing bottles of Lucas out of Tesco. <laughs> what? Can, can you let the manager know? So we had a security guy, Robbie, there, that, that came to all the games with us. <laughs> so he knew it works with hearts. Um, so I, I went down and I says to Pat and Pat says to Robbie, Robbie, fuck him, we're leaving him, go and you get him and sort it out. So a bus went away up, sitting at a pre-match, half seven, whatever, no a pre-match or evening meal, half before, seven. Huh? And he walks, okay, all right lads, as if nothing's happened. <laughs> what are you doing? Ah, uh, it was a misunderstanding, I can't work the machines. <laughs> <laughs> so he was on his wheels, wages. And that, but that, the press are saying, oh, this is Lee, he's, he's doing this, he's doing that. No, it, it was a genuine mistake, I think. Uh -huh. But they, they crucified him for a time and all, all the stuff. And I was forever, that they were saying he's a bad influence, he's this, he's that, was he? He was, he was, he was brilliant run about the place. Mm. Great in training. Worked his balls off in training. Trained, like, just loved football. Yeah. A bit like Snoddy. Like, uh -huh. Just came alive in training. But great in the dressing room. Um, a winner as well. Aye. Was it him and Billy, did he not fling Billy Brown about? Aye. Um, <laughs> to, you know, i never seen this because I was a shock on the treatment table. But <laughs> um, they were out at training and I, I come into the story a wee bit later. Um, but, but I, I think what happened, the games were going on and Pat had stopped it, I think. Now sometimes managers say, great, these have done enough lads, the standard was good. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure, I think it was for the good standard, I'm hoping it was for that and not the bad standard, but said, right, lads, after the, the third round they stopped it and at least come on, won't go for another round. And we Billy jumped, I think Billy jumped in and says, No, that's it, he's are done. Come on, you fuck, you know the players are like, uh -huh, like play again, uh -huh. another round, man. And I think Billy says something like this is about the story I'm getting. Billy says something to him. I don't know what you want to play, you can shite all morning. Suddenly. <laughs> Decent to Billy. I know. I, think Billy, I don't know if Billy said it as a joke or whatever. Uh, I've only heard this second hand. And he's like, who are you talking to? You prick or something. And, and Billy walked towards him. <laughs> the wee man just grabbed him. <laughs> flung, flung him to the ground. And that was it. Like, what, people are coming out and saying it was a heat butt. It, it was uh, nothing. Uh, that was it. it was, and the two of them were fine. And they got, I think the day got on well now and all that. And, but but that was, that's what happened. And so... He comes storming in, and I, so I, you just see he's in a four of the else and locker or I didn't see him, but locker all emptied and I don't know if you've been to the Hibs training ground, but the treatment room looks out to the car park. Right. So he's, well, look at my bin bag. So I'm maybe lying, what, it was probably my back, so I'm, what the fuck's he doing, man? Like, any of the rest of the boys are in there, I think he's been recalled back to Wolves or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm lying, the next minute, or maybe ten minutes later, Pat comes in. You're going to need to go and get him. What do you mean go and get him? He's away. So he's away. So Pat tells me the story. And I go, right, so how am I going to go and get him? Where will he be? And Pat's going, well, he's not going to be fucking far, is he? Because he can't drive. <laughs> what was he walking? <laughs> so I jumped in my motor. And he came out of Trinent. It's a back road. I get him. He'd walked all the way through Trinent with his bin bag or his, or his back. And I pull up at the side, so he's there. Right, in. Nah, fuck off. What are you talking about? Get in the motor. No, I'm not going back there. So he, he says, no, they're going to paint this picture that I've done this and done that again. I'm fed up with it. I says, I'm not taking you back here. I'm taking you home. Get in. So he gets in, I drive him wherever. He tells me where he was living. So took him down the road, drove back to training. Still at the same point at the point. So I'm getting Lee's story. I, I just wanted to play another game. Oh God. So I'm going, this is a bit extreme for somebody just wanting to play right. another game. And then that, that's what happened. But it was forgot about and... Of course, the press make a big issue. Uh, Lee Griffith sticks ahead in Billy Brown. He's beat Aberdeen in the semi-final. He's confident he could win the final. He was it between Celtic and Hearts. He's watching the semi-final, Celtic and Hearts. I was. Um, Who were you watching? Hearts. Uh -huh. I think better chance of beating, beating Hearts. He's in a pub in, in Coke Bridge, which is, as you know, is mainly Celtic. Um, sitting watching it and when Beatty scored the goal, oh, yes, me and a couple of my mates and everybody's looking at us. And, <laughs> <laughs> Shit, maybe better watch you. Um, no, but Celtic were at the time were Celtic were a better team than Hearts. Yeah. 
Um, the occasion would have been, I think, the games were tight against Hearts that season. I think Hearts had won them all right enough, but they were tight. Yeah. Um, so we, of course, we were. I think any team would have been, if it was Motherwell, if it was Aberdeen who'd get through, MD would have been wanting to play Hearts rather than Celtic yeah. in the final of the Scottish Cup. See, when it was Hearts, did you now think I've got a real, we've got a realistic chance of winning the Scottish Cup? We played Celtic the next season and we thought we had a realistic chance of winning it as well just because we had beat them that season. Yeah. So I think even if we'd have played Celtic, we'd have thought we had a realistic chance because it was a final. Right. Um, and as I said, we had we had players on the pitch that could hurt teams. Mm. We needed to get it right defensively, but we never that day. How was the week's build-up? Because obviously, as I said, we spoke to Gaz and he, he, he said something about the formation that he's worked on in training. It was something that he's never done that se- the whole season. Was that right? No. No. Build up was great. Um, we went to Ireland for for the week. I think we went, we played then we played well first and foremost we had to survive in the league. So we beat them firmly on the Monday night a couple of weeks earlier to relegate them. So I think they were two points behind us. We had we two games to go that. They were at home a eh, Fall Falkirk or St Mirren or somebody. I can't remember who was who it was at St Mirren maybe. They were at home at St Mirren the last game of the season. We were away at Inverness. So it was a big game, Easter Road. So we had to win. Um, I heard Billy saying last week that 4-0 flattered them. Yeah, uh, flattered us. Uh-huh. We were 3-0 up after 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going, what? He's back have, on the drink, isn't he? It could have been about seven. <laughs> anyway, so... So that was that job done, right? Yeah. Easter Road bouncing that night. And again, I'm going, I love this place, man. And it was, and so that, taking into that, we're going, right, that's a good result. Um, we went, went to Inverness, played Inverness on the Saturday. I had been carrying a wee niggle, as had a few others, so a couple of days didn't play. And Inverness beat us 2-0 or whatever, and we flew out to Dublin on the Sunday morning. Pat was looking at it in a way where he's going, I can get Lee out of Edinburgh, I can get stuff like this. Yeah, right. we, so we were in the hotel, we, we trained as much as we could. In terms of, you know, I don't mean running, and but we worked on what we could work on. So all the stuff about, we played the same shape against Dunfermline 1-4-0 that right. we did in the final. Slight change, Griffiths didn't play against Dunfermline, Owen Doyle did. So it's Griffiths' fault you got beat in the final? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, it was 11 people's fault, or 11 guys' fault that we got beat in the final. And, and, it, and it bugs me that yeah. it was nothing to do with the preparation. But we're back in Edinburgh, we trained... Did you train Wednesday or Thursday morning we're back in Edinburgh for four o'clock for your dinner? Press day, I had done the captain's press day, the same as Mary Sal Lucas. No different. Yeah. Same, like he, they done the same, we done the same. Nothing had changed. Friday we went to East Kilbride to the hotel. Hearts went to whatever hotel they went to, so it was... Similar build, it? It's a load of shite. Uh-huh. See what you said about some of the lone boys didn't the care? Were some of them in the starting 11 for that game? Mm-hmm. And were you, did that worry you? No, I don't mean that they didn't care, but I don't think it hurt them. As much? Um, as much as it did your Paul Hanlons, your Lewis Stevenson, Ivan Sprouls, people that were were real, real Hibs fans. But like, you talk about the lone players, and Matt Docker, he's played how many games Wolf. in the Premier League in, in England now? He's a, he's an, a full international player. He didn't do great in the game. Yeah. And he got a lot of stick because he put a tweet out after the game. He was a naive young kid and he was wrong to do what he'd done. Um, Glad this is over or something. It was poor in the game, but there were eleven A's that were poor. Yeah. Um and how early on in the game, Jazz, did you know it wasn't gonna be your day? Thirty seconds into the second half. What was that the red card? Mm-hmm. Because uh-huh. we, we were poor. Poor in the first half. Um You score obviously. We get back in the game. I scored right on half time. But it was a it was a poor game. Um really, I think. On, from both teams, yeah, like, uh-huh. I think so. And only recently have I kind of watched it back fully because it's it's been shown recently and a lot to talk about. It was why to just check a few things as well because you know what it's like. You don't always go back and watch particularly bad games. No. Um, but the poor game for both sides when and we couldn't have been any worse in the second half than we were in the first. So we get in at half time and right things get said. Bang! Like we'll be better. We'll go out. So we go out and within thirty seconds or whatever it was a minute. So within a minute of football, we we went for two one down, to three one down, and a man down. Mm. But taking away the fifteen minute break, 
in that minute. So I score, and then if you if you take that break away, they scored their penalty a minute later. What's your man thinking? And that, that, that's the only look you can. We could we could talk about that game all day, and well, we couldn't because I wouldn't. But um, <laughs> but it gets spoken about a lot. But I'd love to have get by that first ten minutes just to see. Um, the game should have been stopped in the halfway line. They had the chance to foul him mm. on the halfway line. Um, then gets fou- they foul him. To be fair, the referees don't do their any justice. Not no so much Craig Thompson who admitted to me afterwards that it wasn't him that made the call. It was his. Did he really? Yeah. I, it, it was a foul. Yeah. But it was it was outside the box. Mm. But we still would have been down to ten men, so we'd have been fighting a losing battle. So I'm not making an excuse, but it wasn't a penalty. It was a free kick. But right away you're. Good. You've went for going, we've got the full Hibs end bouncing, getting in at half time, thinking we're back in this game. We're thinking we're back in the game. We get a few things sorted that we think it was going wrong, as you always do. And then within 30 seconds, bang, body blow, and you're going, it's going to be a long, a long 45 odd minutes. Is that the worst 45 minutes of your career? Yeah. Yep. By a mile. But just seeing the Hearts fans celebrating and keeping the ball. No, so not so much for them. I wasn't too much caring about them. It was more for the the the, the Hibs fans and the people that I knew that were hurting, mm. um, that were so desperate to. I don't know, I wasn't, but whoever it was against, but you had Paul Hanlon that was a diehard Hibs fan, Lee Stevenson, diehard Hibs fan. Ivan Sproul had come in and had became a diehard Hibs fan. I know that sounds daft, but yeah. it, I I had that point. Had got myself right into the club, and and it was hard. Um, because we had we had let a lot of people down in part as well. We'd let Pat down mm. badly, I think, that day. And watching it back, we there's nobody to blame in that game other than the players. Yeah. And I'll I'll no see any different shape. Look, you can talk about shape all you want, you whatever. The score for I think the score for three set plays. They they won most second balls. Talk about shape all you want. Like individuals, don't Aye, you? of course. And when, it, when I've seen it back now, there's a few individuals that, and I'm one of them too. I'm not sitting here saying I was good in the game. What you the shocker? I wasn't one of, I wasn't the worst, but I was poor. I was really poor in the game. We were all really poor, but there were some that that were ridiculously bad. That mm. that that when they watch it back, I don't think they'll be proud. They'll be. Nene's are proud of herself, but I think when they watch that back, they'll be they'll be ashamed watching herself on that pitch in a national cup final. It's yeah. my take on it. I need to ask you. I know you probably don't like speaking about it, but scenes like the dressing room afterwards. Weird because I think they had part away right away for the flash interviews or whatever, so it took him a while to come in. So you just sitting there without the manager? I think so. If I remember right, I think so. A few things get said. Um, Who would be saying them? You. Or coaches are coaches that that day, um, just with the nature. I think of that. Um, it's the usual stuff: boots getting flung off, all that, all, like, all the stuff that that goes into it. It was a quiet dressing room, as you would expect. We could hear all the other stuff going on as well, and it was there wasn't much said, if I'm honest. You know, I've heard people coming in and saying there were riots over this or that. There wasn't. Should there have been? Maybe if people think that, do I think it would have helped? No, no there and then. Um, the discussions were then had later. Um, but that first 10 minutes was a bit of shock, really, I think, afterwards. The Hearts fans will buzz after that that we were sitting in shock and devastated, but, but we were. Mm-hmm. So were all the fans, and so were all the fans worldwide, and, and it did hurt, and it hurt a lot of people. But I, I'll still go back to it. I hurt people a lot more than, than others, and... And those people know who they were, and I'll tell you that the person that hurt the most was Pat Fenley, in my opinion. So for all the ones that come on and say Pat got this wrong, get that wrong, and I'm not sticking up for him. And well, I'm not sticking up for him, but I'm no on here to just talk Pat up. But I'm just giving you my opinion on it because people have been have come on and gave you their opinion of it mm-hmm. and how they they seen that cup final and how they where the faults were. For me, the faults were the players on the pitch, me included. And Pat picked the team, of course he did, but. But we should still never have got ourselves in that position in a game, regardless. So, the, aye, the, there is a fault at, at, at last patch door, but more, more so at the players. That's brilliant. Uh, right, Northern Ireland caught. How's, what's the eligibility there? <laughs> My grandfather. Jimmy Nicholl, your dad. Aye, that's how bad Northern Ireland must have been then when they were wanting me, man. Were you buzzing when they called you up? Uh? No, really. <laughs> um, no, it was a wee, it was a strange one because I was out when I came back to Coventry again. But Michael McBride was the national team physio, um, 
Scotland national team physio and he was a Coventry physio, Craig Levine was a manager and Michael kept telling me, I've come and done again, I've come and done it. I was playing well like, uh-huh. in, in the championship and and I, I thought like, I, mean, I've, I never thought I'd go and get the caps crushed off better. I go or near and near like people like him, I just picked him because he's in my team now but I never thought I was anywhere near that level. But I'm thinking, I'm playing well in this league and uh, tough league. Championship, aye, and good standard, eh? Playing week in, week out yeah. when I was fit. So, and keeping good players out of team. So, and they were calling people up at times and I'm thinking, and I knew they were doing watching. So it got to the point, but Michael O'Neill, obviously, I think he got one date as well that I could play with Northern Ireland. So, my agent phoned me and I says, well, phone Craig because, and see what, see what his take on it is because, Obviously, I'd, I'd want to play with Scotland. I've got if I ever get the chance. So Craig Levine, this is. Aye, uh-huh. so he phoned him and he says, "Aye, we're, we're still coming down and watching him." And aye, we, but I, I'd never tell him that we'll never pick him. But I'd never tell him to not back a chance to go and play in international football. So basically, you're telling me you're never <laughs> going to pick me. Fucking hell! <laughs> so, am, am I hearing that right? <laughs> so I'm never telling. You liked you better as a centre forward, Big Levine, didn't it? I just don't know. I think he hates me altogether. But <laughs> again, that's that's for other reasons. Um, but no, so I'm, I'm sitting on the phone going, I don't think I heard that right. Like, did, can you get that? No. Again? Like, I, I would never tell him I'm not going to pick him. But I'd never tell him to knock back the chance to go and play in international football. So I says, right, I'll go for it. I phoned a few people and people says, don't do it. If you're not convinced, Dolan says, go and do it. Like, it's a chance to go and play international football. And then I thought, you know what? Take away the plane. Steve Davis, Johnny Evans, all these people. Like, I'm going to go, go and train with him. Yeah. See, see how you are, see if that, the trips. Well, it was Holland, the game, the first game. There maybe one before it that I had said they'd consider and then the the, the hauling game. A week before the Euros. That's going to be bouncing. Like mm. they, they were at the Euros. It was our last game. I'm Where from, was it after that wasn't I packed. It was wow. it was a final game before the Euros and stupidly I'm thinking that'll be brilliant. <laughs> so, what makes you think that's a good game? You want an Azerbaijan at home, mate. <laughs> I'm going, I'm saying, by the way, this is going to be magic. What an atmosphere it's going to be. <laughs> Six now. Six. <laughs> oh man, I'm it was bo- amazing. Robin Van Bommel, Van Persie, Schneider. Schneider was a player, man. Love oh, Schneider. Yeah. What amazing, eh? <laughs> Robin, that I can remember. What did they have that, like, your championship SPL striker, didn't they? What a question that is, eh? Well, I think that they had, like, I don't, I don't know, I think you could even say there's players in Scotland that have had that. I think when you played against them, like, Van Dyke. Yeah. I just think he had something that, that you know you, you when you've played again you, you just know uh-huh. that like you could tell for the start that he just had something that yeah. I think you can sense when with their players like and even when like, even at some of some of the ones like Jordan Henderson came on loan to came on loan to Coventry and he wasn't there the Jordan Henderson he has now by miles but yeah. you could still you could you it's know a he's got yeah he's got that wee bit where you go he could be something here mm-hmm. like Special, I mean, like, yeah. you know, he's got to have a career, but they were, again, they were a different level. Like, Robin was just, I think he was at the peak at Bayern Munich at the time. And I committed, like that. and I was quite quick. Like, people say I was slow, and I was at the end with my injuries, but I was still all right. And uh-huh. he knocked it by me, and I think, I genuinely think I had faith. I don't know, but talking about he knocked it by me on the halfway, so I was on the halfway line, and he would have been about 10 yards behind the D. <laughs> and I think I see and honestly he catches up with me wow. and I just need to nudge him and foul him I'm like fucking hell where did he come from but, and I'd never experienced that like, that was thought to Billy Dodds all over again wasn't it aye <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking I'm not Billy Dodds and going no that was I thought it was Billy Dodds running by me <laughs> no but and then and I tackled him and it was I've got that it was a bad tackle but it, I'm thinking I can't have it and, and uh-huh. he just and no they can all talk English and this is what I can remember for you guy. What are you doing, man? I'm not putting on the accent. You're better doing it. I'll make an R set. But he says, what are you doing, man? I've got a tournament next week. And I just kind of like, I, Robin said that to I, you. I, I do, and I've got the tackle. I'll be able to find it and say, it's a bad one, right? And it's, it, again, like that. But I'm thinking, because I need to stop him because he's going to make me look stupid. What and are you doing, man? I, what are you doing, man? I've got a tournament next week. And I just kind of. What did they fuck up? No, I just kind of looked at him and done. 
like that. <laughs> and I went, I think we were five nothing down at the time, and I'm going, oh no. And Amazing. Did you get a strut? Aye, Hunter. Oh, Hunter, did well, you? He, huh? he came yeah, on, yeah, aye. Oh, I think brilliant. So they, I think they took Van Persie on and Hunter, I think, was having the season in his career. And I think he was at Ajax at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming on and his elbows are then hitting me in the face and I end up playing the 90 minutes, left-sided centre-back, took Van Persie off, brilliant Hunter Lars coming on. and oh, it was. What did Michael O'Reilly say to you after the Andre, was he bothered? He was bothered, aye, uh-huh. because it, it, at that point I think he'd seen the change because he had a... He, Michael was great. Like he really was. Yeah, he's like, I, mean, I interviewed him, I was impressed with him. Yeah. And bro, and it's, it's weird that I'm saying this because I must have went on seven trips and got one cap. Never even got on uh-huh. on all the other trips. And But he would always pull me and say, look, thanks for coming. Or he'd phone me and say this, whatever. And talk about my management of that. And, and he'd always say, like, he would say, look, I'm bringing you here and th- the worst thing I can... Give me everything because the worst thing I can do here is leave you. I'm no... No getting his contracts, he says that, but I've only got a, a pool of 26 or whatever players to pick. And he says, so give me everything you've got, that's all I ask. And he was, I think he, he'd seen the change and they were getting better and the Holland man was a kind of slap in the face. Yeah. And people had pulled out and, and he says, look, this can never happen again. He says, we, we, we can't have this again. And to be fair, they didn't. And no, no long after that, I think they went and drew, I was in the squad, but I pulled out injured kills me that I did I think, I think it was a draw either drew they beat 2-1 and Niall McGinn scored against Portugal yeah. Ronaldo scored for Portugal I think and I went to Portugal and I'm going like I missed out on that one but I went on other trips I went on and it was great experiences like training with like, the likes like, like, how, how good was Evans? brilliant like, and I would all oh, my pals like, we've, I think I've had this conversation with you they sit and they watch it on the tele like, Johnny Evans at Man United earning that and that and I'm going to them you have no idea like, uh. how good he like and we we do know I think yeah. like you know how good to play at Man United you're you're a good player, right? But see when I seen him, I was wow, like he was top mm. top class. The five one beating for Hearts that final, but again it's a Scottish Cup final. In the next season, you get to the Scottish Cup final again, but semi final three down to Falkirk at half time. How was that? How was that dressing room? Again preparation. Talk about all good again. Again we're three 0 down at half time. Lyle Taylor missed a one and one in the forty fifth minute to make it four 0 I yeah, remember again. I'm no joking. So what, what 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 had gone on in the first half? Then same again. Maybe a bit of stage fright. Hamden. Definite stage fright. Um, Pat, I think I think it was. I think he took Scott Robertson off. He worked with Mick Dundee. He took Scott Robertson off after twenty minutes. Always yeah. a good decision to take Rob off. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> um, no me. Um, and he made a change. I'd done that but I think we were 2-0 doing at that point anyway um, the bear Paul Kearney had I don't know had, he had must not have slept the night of four or something um, <laughs> what a boy man he's brilliant isn't he? oh, I love him man brilliant. good player by the way uh-huh. but just that day it didn't work for him uh-huh. it didn't again look for any and I can remember looking at Paul Hanlon and going this is happening again and so luckily now if it went to four we would never get back in it but I'll go back to what I say is, and, and by this point, Owen Doyle was scoring goals as well. But I'll go back to what I say is, we had, we had Griffiths in our team. So, still in my head, I'm thinking, walking down, we need to get this right in here, because we've got a chance if we get a goal. Doyle will get us a goal. Griff will get us a goal. Yeah. Something will happen here. Fuck, walked in, man, the place was erupting. Tomo, can through everybody. And rightly so, call yourself an effing football player. And you... So, you know what it's like sometimes when, when you see somebody going, you get excited, like, <laughs> the wrong way, so I start, I'm, like, who can I shout at? So I'm, you, and I'm going through people, and what the fuck are you doing? And that was a problem, that's the worst I've ever seen a dressing room at half time, but it needed, we needed it. Yeah. And it, it, it was close to the bone with people, it was, without being personal to, towards them like them as people it was personal towards them in football terms like if that makes sense yeah. like, question them I, football wise uh, are you you got the heart for it? you get the balls to go yeah. back out there and play like, and this was players doing this and Pat was allowing this which I thought was good management because he stood back now a lot of managers would have from my side I've been in that position and I've been the one that's come in and went mental first and went maybe I should have let the players do it yeah. to see if they can get a wee bit out of their self first because especially nowadays players are a bit quiet 
But Pat stood in the background, I can remember. Um, and he's, and Tomo's gone. And he, football players, fucking, this is, this is a proper fucking football club. We're no representing it, right? He's at an effing shambles. He's at a shambles. And, I, and, I've, and I'm sitting and I'm trying not, and I'm trying not to get involved, not as much, because I know I'm waiting, waiting, I'm finished. Finishing so I can hear my go. Uh-huh. And I'm like, hey, you know what, he's fucking right. And so then I get into it and, and all hell breaks us. And somebody's saying, oh, what about fucking you? And I, and I, and, and, I, and Tom was going, who, me? And I'm going, me? <laughs> and, and the fall, everybody's, honestly, it was like a fight in a nightclub. Uh-huh. Everybody's stalling up and going, going mental. And, but we all questioned each other and it, it worked. And you, you go back out. So it settles down, Pat steps in then. And he was calm. He done, you know what? He's a, he's a just, he's a spot on. He's a been embarrassing. He's a this. He's a that. But he's an embarrassment to yourself, to your families, to the crowd coming back in batches after last year. And that's why he needed to say. And I thought it was one. I don't remember many team talks, but it was one of the ones I remember where I thought, you know what? I, he he took the heat out of what was. So he took, like assessed the situation. Right? Uh-huh. But it was like maybe players wanting to fight with. I'm maybe sitting. That talking back to me like that. Who would have a go back? Who would be the one that would? Everybody, Griff was it? Griff was getting involved, but people that you wouldn't think. Mm-hmm. We're getting we Louis, who we Louis would say he's but but we oh, we are the best. But we Louis and I got people, and so like you've maybe you maybe then get a team going out three 0 down that are all hating each other, going onto the pitch. But Pat had seen no, this was his chance to get in and just bang take the sting right out it, mm-hmm. even though we're three 0 down. I'm just go and get the next goal and you'll win this game and see the funny thing is see as soon as you say that there were a sense in there that we believed it yeah. it was like we will by the way like and it took a wee bit longer to come and we missed a penalty as well Griffiths hot the bar missed a penalty then the two of them missed the rebound and had an argument with each other <laughs> I mean Doyle <laughs> missed... angry dressing room aren't it? aye <laughs> so but we got the goal and then he... so we get the extra time um, I, can, I can still remember it so that was that extra time so Hibs big club you don't go back into the dressing room so we're storing no water no oh. power aids no nothing Falkirk are storing drinks I'm going off my head <laughs> at Frank Nuttall the, the sports scientist who that's all I want to talk about him um, <laughs> so I'm going I'm going off my head and Griffiths is going to me Shut the fuck up, will you? We'll try to win again. So he's been me. He's actually getting me to Camden. And I'm thinking, I can remember all this. So that, that, that comes out, Tam McCoke rings out, and we're, we're getting our drinks and that. It wouldn't matter, but just all the wee things that uh-huh. I'm doing your head in. And we go out and then the wonder goal up for the corner. And I knew as soon as it, I knew his first touch. Can you remember the goal? No. Nah. He take, Griffiths, he takes a touch, corner swings in, they clear it, touch, and he bends it, left foot. Mike McGovern, two Mike McGovern's with me, I say, yeah. but he, he heard it that sweet. But I knew as soon as he heard it that that, that was that was I was going to another final, and it, and it was like. But the sad thing about it for me was uh, the thirty thousand or whatever Hibs fans that were at the game at the start. A lot of them had left, and rightly so. Oh, at half time had they? I did. I did think they'd left even before that. And if I was one of them, I would have left. But they they walked to it and. And a lot of them will probably regret that because it was a great comeback. Yeah. And but but that and even at that dressing room at full time. Still it, fighting. No, it wasn't fighting, but it was just fucking bad moods. <laughs> right. And then Pat loses his job in November two thousand and thirteen. Terry Butcher replaces him. Massive centre half. What a player he was. You must have been excited at the thought. He'd done well at Inverness as well as a manager. You must have been excited when you heard Terry Butcher was getting the job, no? I think the way Pats, I was gutted yeah. um, for Pats, so taking that with it, I was because look, we were still fifth in the league and we were doing okay. Um, but fifth, why is that when he, when he came in fifth? Why, when Butcher came in? Uh-huh. Well, I think, no, don't quote quote me on it because I'm, I'm saying it, but um, well, we're, I'm sure we were only four, five, something like that, points are third right. in, in the league in October, November time. Right. So we were doing all right. Um, but Pat decided to leave anyway, so that, that, was, that was fair enough. Um, and away he goes and brilliant the, the, the way like just the classy guy I shoot went round speak, speaks to people thanks everybody away, away he went so anyway so announcement and then when I heard it was going to be a butcher I was I was pleased mm-hmm. genuinely because I 
after sorry after that cup final I should have got back surgery so this this leads into this um, and I, I didn't I went against it no the surgeon's advice but he says it's touch and go where to do it but this surgeon's operator on Andy Murray he's been a consultant to Tiger Woods wow. and, and I, you've fucked him off well he done my first one <laughs> <laughs> he done my first one right. and then uh, and he says to me look we could do it now and there's a good chance it worked or we can leave it and I says to him what do you think he says well maybe better doing it and I'm going, but I'm going, I might be fit for the new season because mm. I've just missed a cup final. I'll say it again. I should have got it done. So, anyway, so getting into that, right? So, I didn't play after the Malmo game, which was another one we spoke about. Yeah. Um, and then Butcher's for, Pat's last game was my, my last game for Hibs as well. Um, Hearts, Hearts beat us in the League Cup. Pat had told me after the game he was leaving anyway. He said he was leaving even if we won. I don't know if he. He's ever told told any of that, but he told me that. What um, even if they won the game, he was going to leave. I think he, he, he did enough. Aye, and he, his wife was back in Ireland, and I think he had just had enough of Edinburgh, and he was seeing that no matter what he was doing, uh, I don't know his reason actually. Right. But I think he had just thought, you know what? Can I win here, really? Aye. Uh-huh. For what's happening and the specs and it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, and, and I, they, I generally do think a lot of it was doing it to the family as well. Mm. But I might be, I might be wrong here, but put it in anyway, because he'll phone and tell me if I'm wrong. Um, so I played the Aberdeen game, so I'd been out for ages. Played Aberdeen on the Saturday, we played Hearts on the Wednesday night. Ryan Stevenson scores a cracker. We lose the game. Um, I get sent off for a daft tackle of Callum Parson. Just stupid. But again, on your head gun. Aye, uh-huh. so just, but I wasn't fit either. That was my last game for Hibs. Pat told me that night, and I'm saying, Pat, you can't. And Jimmy tried, Jimmy tried to talk him out it. Pat, you can't leave, we'll, we'll, we'll get this right, we will. Jimmy, who, sorry? Nickel, Jimmy, Jimmy was in. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy was in as assistant, right? Okay. Had gone. Liam O'Brien had gone. Jimmy came in. So. Does all right, Jimmy, didn't he, with the jobs? He doesn't have, aye. <laughs> That's when you're good, you get good jobs. Um, But, and so. Pat's gone anyway, so right, we know we're going to get a new manager, so right, Terry Butcher's done well. Like, this will be good, let's like, centre back. And so comes in first week, great. Um, first week, it was an international break, I think, so for, I come in training, you get the wee lift training and stuff, I think this is good. It's different, doing a lot of back four work with, with Terry Butcher, who's world-class centre. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, I'm going to learn here. Call up Northern Ireland, away to Turkey. Living so, the dream, mate. Hi. As we go, we go down to, down to Adana again, Syria. <laughs> um, come back, get back on the Thursday, and it's shaping the Friday's first game away to St Mirren. I was looking forward to booting Gowser. <laughs> um, away to St Mirren, shape up on the Friday, my back goes. His first game, so I couldn't play. So away I go. Um, no, no, I think the first game, murder ball, Gowser called it. No, me, Gowser. <laughs> um, so that was me till I tried to come back. I tried to come back. We went, no, I never. I went and got the surgery, which I should have got in the summer. Right. Got the surgery in the December, and that helped me. It was three months, done everything right. And then all of a sudden, so that, this is when we're getting into the Terry Butcher stuff. Um, in January, I got the surgery in December, and the surgeon says to me, it'd be a good idea to get away somewhere hot. Music to my ears, so I'm thinking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Back down to a diner. <laughs> Me and Don. Uh, the Wayne at the time, right? Magic. <laughs> no. So, right, where can I fly to this time? Rather you stayed in Europe. I'm going, it's not going to be very hot anywhere in Europe. In January, is it? Apart from Tenerife. However, I don't even know if that's classed as Europe. Folk will hammer me here. I think it is. But, but I said, she's anywhere close. I said, what's the reason for this? He says, in case anything goes wrong, like I can speak to them. Yeah. So well, sure, I can, surely I can go to the Middle East. There's doctors out there that are, that speak good English and that. Uh-huh. Uh, like you can get an interpreter or what. There was a reason for it, or a European health policy. There was something in it that he could, he could do. Yeah. He says to me, right, if you go out there, you're you're taking the risk that if something happens, you're either going to need to fly me out, or you're going to need to fly yourself back in an ambulance. Right. Yeah, what's going to cost you? So I says, right, I'll take the risk because I'm thinking. I'll be alright. My, my career's done it. I think it was my second back surgery. My time I was gone, I thought I thought I was done. Right. Right. So and I'm thinking, I'm saying to Don, well, we'll just go get away. So the Christmas, New Year, brilliant. Had the surgery about the start of January, the start of December. So I was up and about for Christmas and New Year, it was magic. 
or this shit and like, get a Christmas half, like, you know, if it's lighting me, you don't get them, so... I had a great time actually, but Hibs were doing alright. So Cut the red wines with the dinner and Absolutely. Yeah. With breakfast. Um, <laughs> Hibs, were, Hibs were going alright at, at the time. Yeah. Beat, beat Hearts in the Derby. James Collins, your mate, scored the Oh, what a man call. Um, at Easter Road, I watched it in the, the pub with Capu. I didn't let the fire extinguish her off. So brilliant. I'm like, this is good. So I'll get away, I'll get my treatment and I'll do my rehab. So we went to Dubai for, I think, for a couple of weeks and then I was flying straight for there into East Midlands to go to St George's Park. So I'm sitting, sitting in, in Dubai on my phone, but message, a number comes up. Hibs are playing Aberdeen, or BN Sports. Like, yeah, yeah, BN, so, uh, so any, Richard Keyes. Like, any time you're out there, like, all the Scottish games are on, so I, was, I didn't even realise, I'm flicking through the channels and fucking Aberdeen v Hibs is on. Like, I'd go on Hibs TV if I wanted to watch it, but it's, but, it's live. So I was watching our game, and but, but cut up the... Go on and on my, or two hours before this, I get a message for a number that I never knew any him. Just come up. Remember, lads, it's all in our, our hands. And then it was a wee key emoji. Take this wee key onto the pitch, open up, and it was some other emoji. Look at the world. Open up the world. But, and I, I'm sitting looking at this and going, who the fuck? Somebody's trying to take the piss out of me. Right? So I think it was Tomo. I text, I said, Tomo, if you just get a message, and I think, I'm sure it was Tom, it was either Tom or Paul Hanlon and, and he says back and he's like, don't even ask, I'll phone you after the game. And I says, Tom, well, I'm four hours or three hours ahead, of you phone me tomorrow or something? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at this phone and I'm going, what's going on here? Like, everything's in our hands, the key, the key to our destiny is tonight in this game. I'm going, so I'm sitting watching, trying to make sense of this, because uh -huh. like, I can't really speak to them, because yeah. they're all on the pitch and... <laughs> so anyway, I speak to Tomo the next day, he's brought in this psychologist, Big Dave. So, I, I ended up being in this group this full holiday. <laughs> and your name playing? No, and I don't think they realised I was in it, so he'd been geared the numbers of the people. He only put people in that, I, I think because he had told a lot of players he could leave, but I was because I was injured, I never get told that. Yeah. I don't know what, if I'd get told that or no. But I was playing in his first game, so maybe I wouldn't have. But, but it was weird, man. What, but, the text you'd get through? Aye, uh, but... Text for Dave at 11 o'clock at night. If you're still awake, there is a key. <laughs> Turn the key and fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, I'm being serious. I, I'm even joking. Ask Tomo. Ask, ask any of the Inverness boys, because I asked Josh Meekins about it, and he says, hey, go right and all. Oh, amazing, right? man. So, but it obviously works for some people, and I'm not knocking it. But Surely it boys text him back. <laughs> a load of nonsense now. I'd have killed him, man. No, I, I, look, no, I, I think I'd have loved message X to be about when... <laughs> When he was here, can you imagine what would have been said to him? <laughs> so what would the boys just send back a thumbs up or something? Nothing went back. Nothing, never no, get back now. I, I think it, it, and that became like a... Running joke. I but then, then what was happening was, it all, it all kicked off because, at this point I was back for St George's Park, I'd done a, I'd done a week down there, Ollie Moore's was there, by the way, get him involved. Oh, he must was he, huh? he, 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 There's me, right, fucking skint down there, getting it through the PFA, Doing it to try and get back to get another couple of years out of my career. He's paying what to be able to play in the chat that the chat fat boy <laughs> game. <laughs> Did you speak to him? Aye, we were, we, like the 80s go at a time. Right. I still want to regret because at the time I'm saying to Don, I can't go and get my, my picture of him or something. Should I go to his phone number, man? Uh -huh, definitely. Did you get a pint of that with him now? No, at night like, you just went and done your living, they went back to their room. But he, he was great by the way, see we all the... I didn't realise how big it was. Don was telling me, because I was all in Moors, who was this guy and all that, uh -huh. and she was telling me that, oh, James, he's massive, we're standing in the ice bath and that, and you, you do all the stuff together, so like, they put you on the bike, you do your rehab. He, he was a great guy, and he said, so what you do, all that, and you know, I can't remember the guy's name, you might remember it. He played with Norwich, and he came to Coventry for Norwich, wee striker. Oh, um, Simon Jackson? No. No. Um. For Gillingham, I think, to Norwich, to Coventry. Gillingham. And it was all in it was all Oh, um McDonald. I think he was. Cody McDonald. McDonald. Uh -huh. It was all in Mersey's pal. Right. So I had an in, so I'm still in talking to that. And she's like, why are you not your pick? Why are you not his phone number? Why are you not trying to get, <laughs> get his tickets or something? Uh -huh. I think no, I didn't ask him that, but looking back now. It's amazing, man. I don't months. know what well. Key Holly Mums out, get him away for Holly Wally Bay any day of the week. <laughs> Mate, you're Holly Wally Bay dad, man. Oh, I love her, man. I love her. <laughs> right, so anyway, then I'm what happens? Don, Don's always going to kill me for that. 
What are we talking about? So you come back for St James's Park? Aye, right, so... St George's Park. Aye, St George's Park. And so, right, meeting. <laughs> um, so we're at the... I'm just back, aye, so... I'm a, I maybe only missed... No, I've skipped a bit. You need to hear this bit. Right, go. So this is this is where I, I'm really starting to worry. And this is maybe what leads to, to Big Dave coming in. I'm sitting in the dressing room on oh, his first days. comes in. No, by the way, I'm no knocking Terry Butcher because he'd done a... An all right job at Inverness for a season. Up yeah. there, remember, he had them uh-huh. five. I know, he was good at Inverness. Aye, uh-huh. and Mother really done a good job as well. Aye, but I go to, we're sitting and the big chef brings in the, every Monday, so we started later, he brings in the, the roller thing and it's got a pot of tea, pot of coffee, cakes, all this stuff, so we're all sitting. Right, so, I think he's going like, oh, what's going on here? And big Owen Tudor Jones is sitting going like that. He's Gee, seen this before. Aye, uh-huh. right, so, right, so, right lads, just, we need to get to know each other a bit, a bit better and all that. So we need to go and find eh? Um Right, so if you could be any animal in the world, what would you be? Everybody's going, what? Serious? And, and, and we see, right, so it starts on, I'd be a lion. Good answer. Right, what would you be a lion for? Just pick some, I can't remember, right? I can remember some of them. So, it gets to... He gets to be Louis. Louis yeah. Stevenson, I Hi, and I asked Paul today, I can't remember if Louis says he would be a poodle or a Jack Russell <laughs> because, he like, <laughs> because he likes the dogs or something like that, right? So he's like, good answer, Louis. I think it was a Jack Russell. He's tenacious in that or a pit bull or something, we Louis says, right? He done good answer, right? Fine, so I'm, I'm sitting thinking, this is actually all right. <laughs> right? So he gets to me. Uh, um, some of the people would say I'd be this, I'd be, I think, oh, Said I'd be a giraffe for a laugh because he was a big, big guy. Uh, right? So I'm stupid like that, like, go like that, and, and we're going round. And it gets to me, what would you be? I said, I'd be a black Labrador. <laughs> she said, What? I said, I'd be a black Labrador. He says, What would you be a black, black Labrador for? Just because I've had a black Labrador for 10 years, he's a great dog. He's just done that. Like, you might have seen the disgust in his face. He'd done that. I thought you'd have been a lion or a tiger the way you play. And I'm going, I got a light Labrador's. <laughs> you, oh, yes. dear, you mean and another one. So that, and then, it goes to the half. Yeah, what would you be? The half says, I'd be a greyhound. <laughs> I, I can't remember the full story. Runs the man, isn't the what would you be a greyhound for? He says, I've got two greyhounds. All right. And uh, so then, that, this happened regularly, uh-huh. so I'll tell you one about Hef's Greyhound, so tell you to, the next week it was right, you have to tell somebody something that you don't know, nobody will know about you, uh-huh. right, or this was maybe the next morning, so the Hef says I've got two Greyhounds and I walk them 14 miles a day, <laughs> <laughs> and I walk something like that, I walk, I walk them 30 miles a day, something like that, so at this point I'm like, Folk are taking a piss here, man. How does the hef? He doesn't. He can't walk himself, man. <laughs> right, so I get Cummins. Uh, right, but uh, put the, the wine with Jason Cummins would be. <laughs> uh, it was a different. If you could be any past or present, or what, what could you be? What would you be? Look, so everybody's going, I'd be messy. Oh, I think how good he is. Uh-huh. I think I said, poor y'all or something. <laughs> Jason Cummins. <laughs> Purely serious. I think I'd be Hugh Hefner. <laughs> And Butcher's sitting going, and I don't. I think like he was trying to do this for the right reasons, uh-huh. but our boys just won the game. Yeah, uh-huh. and but I thought so. Then these meetings get stopped apart from the squad, so I wasn't allowed in them because I wasn't in the squad. Right, but I was just hearing all the stories. They were, Did Sean Murdoch not say Duncan Bannantyne? Aye, come round to him. And he goes, aye, that's a good answer, but he says, aye, I'd be Duncan Bannantyne because he's a good entrepreneur and he's made loads of money. (laughs) Duncan Bannantyne. That's who he said he would be. Uh, So what's the balloon one? Tell us the balloon one. Is it Celtic Park? He done it at Celtic Park with Inverness. I can't remember if it was was at Celtic Park. See, but he done it with Inverness because Josh Meekins has told me this. Right. And he done it and they beat Celtic. They beat Celtic. I think Inverness beat Celtic or drew with Celtic at Celtic Park. And it, so he got them all to blow a balloon up. I think this was Big Dave's idea. Uh-huh. So blow your balloons up. Right. Right. Fine. Everybody's right. Whatever. Just before kick off. Right. Burst the balloon. That's all the fears. No. 
you go in these courses and people tell you these things, like these things can work and but so that was fine. Not so for fit- well, I've done this, done it, and they went out and beat Selic, or Drew, right? So, they yeah, I think. So, I think we were playing Kilmarnock at, or somebody, or Celtic at Easter Road. It was maybe, I think I was on the bench. Because I get back and I made the bench and a few of his squads, and I'm sitting, and he's like, right, blow the balloons up. I'm going, can you hear I think it was, it, I might be wrong, but I can remember it blowing it up, or I was either on the bench or I was there, but the story's definitely true. Because I was talking to Paul about it, and we blew the balloons up. And he's like, ah, right, burst the balloons. That's all the fears that Celtic can give us. Samaras was a sub. And I'm thinking, ah, that's all right. All the, fe- all the fear's gone. But what if you get to 60 minutes and Samaras is coming on your knacker? You've got to give you another balloon to blow up. Imagine him on the side tier, <laughs> He's going to run me and get another balloon. And, and, I, and the boys at that point... And but mate, see, just to, sorry to interrupt you, but... Terry Butcher, captain of England, you'd think he'd have enough about him that he wouldn't need Big Dave. Surely yeah. he's got enough wisdom and charisma, the guy he is, that I've seen interviews with him and the knowledge that he's got. That, why would he need someone like that? I, I think he did. I, I think he did. He did have it. and He just he trusted in what, what his people and what his staff could bring. Yeah. And, and he thought what, what he was doing was right. And look, was, Eddie Boothroyd was a bit like that. Well, like we turned up at coming away games and the dressing room was all decorated in Coventry gear. Like, genuinely, like, I, like, like, Coventry posters and flags, like, because he wanted it to feel like... The home dressing room. I, but I think there is, there's loads of, and I'm not saying what's right and wrong, because nah. I don't know, but, yeah. but I don't, I'm not sure that was Terry, like, because I can't imagine him in an England dressing room doing that, can nah, you? Like, nah, no way. You, you don't see Terry Butcher the way he was, but, like, that, that's, that's what, that's what was happening. Mm-hmm. And I know you're meant to see everything that stays in the dressing room, doesn't come out, but things like that, where I was banned for meetings and... When Tomo wasn't in the squad band, Tomo wasn't playing in the playoffs. I wasn't playing in the playoffs. No, I'm, Tomo would have made a huge difference. Yes. Um, I think even a half at me would have helped because Ryan McGovern, as much as I like him, a good player, good left back, he was playing centre back. No, he's never a centre half. And it, it, that, that, that's, that's why I say that at the end, to, when he pulled me in, and it, and it was fine with Terry at the end, and he says, Look, I'm letting you go, budget cuts. He was, he was letting me go anyway, mm. um, whether we stayed up or no. but I think most folk get that, get that and I says, look, that's fine. I says, I'm not going to come out and, and hammer you or say anything here. I says, but the one thing I need to come out and say is I was fit. Yeah. Because, look, I've got a, a kid, another kid on the way now, and I need another club. <clears> and it, it looks to everybody that I've not been fit. So I come out and done a bit and says, look, I've been fit for the last 10, 10 games and the last 10 weeks of the season. And it, it created quite a bit of storm just saying, well, why is he, why are they playing a left back instead of... And it, it, do you think it'd have made a difference, aye? Mm-hmm. Would we have stayed up? Who knows? Because you don't know, but I'd have backed myself to get in, in a playoff game against Hamilton, particularly when, when we're 2-0 up, getting, going back to Easter Road to, yeah. to help people. Because bear in mind, Paul Hanlon was injured as well, so you were missing Paul Hanlon, you were missing Tomo. I was out the team, I wasn't playing great because of my back anyway, but my back was fixed, which it showed next year when I went to Dundee and done all right. Mm. So that I had to come out and say that, but... Nothing bad about Terry in terms of that. No. That was Big Dave. Yeah. Uh, another another guy that was on his coaching staff, I think obviously speaking to yourself and Tomo was was Ma- Morris Malpass. I think the way Tomo was terrible, wasn't it? He mm-hmm. had to go and run on his own every yeah. afternoon. We went for him two sports scientists to him then. Right? Now whatever you, you think about them, people were, but but Morris Malpass was a sports scientist. Right? So he was taking Tomo out and getting Tomo Hill runs and whatever. Right. So I'm coming back for a back injury. A serious back in his second back surgery. We, so I'm thinking, by the way, this club have spent a lot of money on this back, and I'm not even getting timed. He put, so I'm standing facing that way. He's about booting the ball, and he'd have to chase it and bring it back to him. I'm going, Phew. so we, David Henderson, who's now at Motherwell, he was getting off his nut. So in the end, it kind of got to the point where they had a wee bit of, I don't know if it was a row or whatever, but Hen, we came to an agreement and I'd done my running with Hendo. I think I said to him, though, to make it up that my back can't take it or something. Just because I'm thinking, I need to think of my career here, I can. Yeah. Going out and then the runs that Morris Malpass has given me mm-hmm. that we, we don't know. Because like, I had a surgeon that was saying, oh, any long runs you're doing, they own an alter G for the first four months to make sure you can do your short stuff on the grass and all that. And I was spending half an hour run, running after a ball at a dog. <laughs> and, and Kevin Thompson's doing the same. That, a top player. Uh-huh. Um, Love Tom as a player, man. Oh, brilliant. And, and I, I'm sitting, so I, I'm watching this club that I'm saying that I, I really enjoy, really love playing for. 
Neen one one and Kevin Thompson isn't playing. Mm-hmm. And you're not playing. Me, I was coming back for injury, fine, but I, st- I still think I'd have helped. Did you find Morris Marpass hard worker, huh? Aye. Aye. And he's a he's the one person in, in football that I've probably, in, and this isn't a Dundee, Dundee United, I think, because I love Paul Hegarty when I worked with him, worked yeah. with him twice. Well, I worked with Billy Kirkwood um, when he was at Livingston, I speak to him, but Morris Marpass tried to do me in. Did um, he? Aye. Yeah, that... And I've, I've still I seen him at the Derby, and he probably doesn't know I know. Um, but and I, that, this is just me being on a personal note. This is nothing to do with football, but this is me being a person and think what he done was wrong. Um, and I've I've no problem saying it because I've been waiting for the chance to say it. But it's never really I've never felt the need or the chance to pop up and say it. But probably now is I'm halfway through the story, so I may as well say it. I've said it without naming who done it. But I was when I left left Hibs, I had a a few offers to go and do pre-season with a couple of teams. Um, I don't want to name the team because then you'll know who and you'll know who to help me because you probably told everybody this. Mm-hmm. But a manager <laughs> phoned me up that they had asked to speak to the surgeon. So I had to give written consent for them to speak to the surgeon to say my back was alright. So that was fine. That's why. So I was comfy with my back. Mm-hmm. Um, and this manager phoned me up and says, look James, it's just to make you aware that I had Morris Malpass on the phone and he says you can only train one day a week. He says and that, that day has to be at the start of the week and we need to give you a hard day's training session. Cause, and then that's that's got to do you for the full week, your body can't cope. That, on my kid's life, You're an that. SPL manager phoned me up, or it was the SPL at the time, phoned me up and says that's what <clears throat> that's what Morris had said to him. Now I'm going, hey, I get that, let's see if that manager had a phone to him and says what was he like now, I was a dick about the place or had influence. He didn't think you were good, huh? Or if I was rubbish, yeah. say that, because that, that's that's your opinion of somebody. Yeah. But he he told he told somebody something that was just completely untrue. I was I was working my balls off to try and get back fit to help Hibs, uh-huh. and he he done me in with that. And and at the time I thought about doing it and coming out and saying it, and I get advice to leave it, and because because then it was it was giving him the opportunity to get back out there. Mm. But I always said at some point I'll see it. And again, it's it's maybe is it the right time? I don't know, but I, I just think as a personal, not being in this side of the game now, even if I've got a player like that's no playing in my team, whatever. If you just say you're my player, yeah, you're no playing in my team. Mm. Somebody phones me up about you, I would say, look, look, come and go and have a look at him. He's like he's, he's that. I'd never turn around and tell a lie. Mm. I would say. I think you, what you've got to be is honest. Yeah. Um, because <clears> what, what I wouldn't say, like if you if you couldn't train every day. I wouldn't say I take him, he's, he's never missed a day's training. Mm. Or, but what, what he could have said is, he said, bother, he's back ever since we've been here, but he's trained for the last three weeks. Weeks, uh uh-huh. Or the last ten weeks, sorry, yeah. and he sat on the bench the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. So, that, that's, that sort of, that lacks class for me. Yeah. Uh, he was a classy footballer, top player, um, for what I believe and what I've been told, but, but as a man, then, I think Tom will say the same thing, so I'm, I, I'm not alone, and, next time he sees me, he might have something to say to me, but, you go and you tell people lies, people find out about it, and, and that's certainly what he done to me. So it's, I think it's it's poor, uh-huh. and I think it it shines through even more now on this side when I see it because I've had those questions asked yeah. for other managers. What's he like, or what's this player like? And I've asked other managers, what's this player like, and whatever, and and they'll maybe say it. You by the way, I don't really go home with him, but he can do he this, he can do that. Aye, have yeah. a look at him. Yeah. Like, but I've never had him to say that, like him like that to me. Mm. It's it's a, a blatant lie they have found it anyway yeah. but, that, but that was for me that, that lacks that lacks class but I'm not surprised with that with him so see just sorry on the last three bit about Hibs, Hibs that, that, that playoff game at Hamilton when that second goal goes in do you think are you sitting in the stand mm-hmm. do you think the director's book do, yeah. do you think we're going down here oh, oh at Easter Road sorry yeah I was worried, I, I, I was worried when the first one went in, because it's a tough place to play. Um, when the crowd's on your back. Aye, uh-huh. and again, that, that goes back to why was Kevin Thompson on the pitch, mm. why was I all Involved. Like, and people say, well, you, you get beaten, but I'd played in big games, I'd, be, I'd been in that environment when things weren't going right. Yeah. Paul Hanlon had been there when things weren't going right. People like Alex Harris, young kids, Sam Stanton, young kids, they hadn't been there no. when things weren't going right. 
So I can get you that we were two nil up. So we just needed to see that through. And for me, get your experienced players on the pitch. Now, if it's not me, because he doesn't think I'm fat enough, I was fat enough by the way, but if he didn't think that, you see me in my pre-season when I came, I was all right. Yeah. Um, I would have done a job for 90 minutes to get us out of the line, mm -hmm. I think. Tomo would have done more than a job. Yeah. Tomo would have dictated the game. So, I, What was the feeling like in the stand when that second goal went in? Was it horrible? Aye, I went down. I oh, thought, did? So aye. you went down what, to the side of the pitch? Aye, well, no, no down to the side of the pitch, but just at the side of the, the tunnel. Tunnel, because right. It, I, well, I told Don to get the, the baby just out because like, I wasn't wanting them to see that either. And my dad was at the game and that because this was a club that we had great, great yeah. memories of as well as a family, like where it was some good results, some some good dates, some bad ones as well that were there, obviously. But we, we, like, we had beat Celtic there, we had big Scottish Cup ties there, stuff that was good. Yeah. So we'd, and that was going to be my last time, so I didn't want, in particular, but the baby was getting to a point where she was looking about and I'm going, she's going to hate football. Mm. And rightly so, the Hibs fans, because they were getting worried. Yeah. Um, and Hamilton were looking the better team. And, and when that changed, you know, that told you the full story when he brings Tom on and he cheers. It was like we'd scored a goal. Yeah. He should have been playing for the start. But look, that's for, that's for them. That's their decision to make. And, and I'm, I'm, see, I'm saying this as a player, not as a manager, because it's hard enough. So I'm not criticising them as, a, as managers or whatever, because Terry Butcher's done a hell of a lot more in the game than I've done as a mm. manager and as a player. But what I, I was in that environment at the time. and and that's why I can have an opinion on it because plenty of other people have it and Kevin Thompson should have been on the pitch and I think I should have been on the pitch as well. And then the penalties, horrible to watch. Aye, just a lot of it then. Um, and you know, and it was, and, and then just, that was a bad dressing room afterwards as well, that was just total, like, again, tears. Silence, tears, was Aye, it? Like, like, like the five wire, like the, the, the wee Louise and that, like people that, like they, they him and Paul, they've been forever in that club. That's yeah. why I was so delighted when they, they won the cup. People that have been dragged through the ringer with every manager there, and you go and they're still there and they're still playing. I don't know how many games, but close to 800 games between them for that club. And that, excuse me, that takes some going. And we lose the only player in the history to win the two cups. Mm -hmm. Players that played at that club. So you see him sit and got it and people like that. And then, Were you emotional, Jazz? Did you have been in tears now? Not so much in tears, but I was, I was low. I think the, the, the one time I, I walked off the pitch, probably in tears, was no walked off the pitch, but the training pitch was when I knew I was missing the cup final. I, I tried, when we tr to be fair to Hibs, they, they tried everything as well. Mm -hmm. um, sent me to Dublin to see this professor guy that worked on all the rugby boys, great. We had to the, the same subject in London, so had, I, I had about four weeks to play with. Normally if I had six weeks, it would have been all right. But go, on Tuesday, I had to try and train. Mm -hmm. And broke down after the boxes and just walked. Like, but the tears are coming down then, and just went in and I said to Pat, "Look, I'll not be back back in. Look, I'm going home." Mm. He said, "No, you're not. Get in your office." Blah blah blah. And he says, "What I want you to do, my set plays and all that." Whether he looked at it, I don't know, but he kept me involved. Right. But that's the only time probably that on a pitch. Um, but seeing people like that and people hurting when, in my opinion, they shouldn't have been mm. because there's no way. We should have been relegated that season. I know it's leagues don't lie and it's going over old ground or whatever, but if, if Pat Fenlon would have stayed, there's no way that team would have been done. And then did you just walk out Easter Road that day and that should have done with Hibs? No, I walked out that day, um, went home and we all went in for a meeting the next day. Get told get told that story and that's that's when I gave my piece um, and said, look, I'm not going to come out and hammer anything here. I'm not going to say, but... I remember at the time I was the captain of the club, Liam was, I think, I don't know if he had officially made Liam the captain or whatever, but I'd been the captain, so I was probably a bigger voice there. Yeah. Than most, or I was a big voice, me and Tom were the big voices that could have come out and said stuff um, if we wanted, but I said I'm not going to do it. Um, but what I will say is I need to let people know I'm fit. Mm. And if you, if you come out and say I wasn't fit, then that's when I'll, I'll bite back. And he kind of says something like, is that a threat? Said, it's not a threat. I says, it's just, I need to protect my own family here because I need to let teams know I'm, I'm fit. Yeah. And he never, to be fair, he's, he's never said a bad word. And I wouldn't expect him to because I've not said a bad word about, about Terry Butcher, but really, um, uh -huh. Big Dave and Mo might be different. But, <laughs> um, but Big, no, wonder where Big Dave is now, eh? Wonder where that key is. No, I would try to unlock something. <laughs> <laughs> right, mate. So... 
talking about all oh, your injury problems, stuff like that. How delighted were you that next season at Dundee? Was there an end there that I'm going to go and prove people wrong? Played the full season, done real well. Warrior, flying into tackles, back held up fine. That must have been a big buzz for you to go and play a full season every week. You I did play every week for Dundee that year, didn't you? I might have missed three games. Yeah. Uh, one when my dad passed away. One when I had a broken rib. And one after we secured the top six because I was pissing blood and the, oh, doc, yeah. the doc wouldn't let me play. Oh, that's right, I and remember that. St Johnston, St. Johnston yeah. I went into the piss and before the derby, the free one game, and looked down and there was red water coming out. I had a urine, t- a urine body infection, infection or something, so I wasn't allowed to play on the Saturday. Um, but, so that was the three games I missed, something like that. Um, but no, the, the, I think the big thing for me was because my dad was still here and he was telling me to stop. Let's stop playing. Aye, because he had seen the, like, you know, for people that said back injuries and, and people have like you seen the Nicky Tiger Woods when he get mm. we get pulled out of the motor and that's because he bat and he was on all that medication and do you know what the, the, the interview I'm talking about? Uh huh. And like, I was I went through a stage in my career where I was t- I taking diazepam on a Thursday and a Friday to play on a Saturday. Now people will not believe that. Like strong don't keep it, and people maybe might believe it when they see how bad I was playing on the Saturday. <laughs> but some of my best games I actually played because it was that relaxed. Um, is that as a pan brilliant, huh? It was good for my back, aye, but when you take too much it, you get off your head. Um, so, but, but that's what, that's what I, I was going through spells like that. My dad was seeing that, and Don was pregnant, and then he was seeing the baby coming in and what he play football. Yeah. And he was saying to me, it's no worth it. Like, he could see, like, I couldn't get my shoes off. Like, mm-hmm. That's how bad. And it was getting to the point, I said, I'll try my last surgery. But it, would, it was a point like, even at Hibs, that sometimes I would have to phone Dawn, right, Dawn, you need to come pick me up. And she, she, would, she wouldn't even say how it's happened. She'd jump in the motor, drive to Hibs' training run, take me to the doctor's surgery. The doctor would give me the whatever that and drive me home because I couldn't even wait for the players to finish training. It was just a case of getting home in my kit. And, that, and it, was, it was horrific and the people and... So we tried that last surgery, but he, he kept saying to me, look, just chuck it, you've got a way in the whatever, you've got a family, you, you go and you'll find something else today, you're doing your coaching badges, blah, blah, blah. But there was something that I'm like, no, I want to. Mm. I, want, I, I think I can get this right, done done that pre-season. And to be fair to a wee Tam, I think that pre-season helped me because I knew that, and I had it in my head as well, it was a fat bunch, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, fat boys, uh-huh. Gowser and that. Jim McAllister, no, I, no. You. You talk, you were fit as well, by the way. We carry, and so like, I thought I was quite fit, but I wasn't. But but then I can remember it just getting better and better and doing all these runs, and I feel good here. My back wasn't getting bad, and it came to the pre-season games, and he's saying, right, we'll leave you, and I'm saying, no, just play me. So I played in all the pre-season games, and I, I missed one. It was the Sheffield United one, just because it was a bus journey. Yeah, I didn't know. I remember it. I got a bit paranoid, and I went. Mm. Because he took the turkey, I'm like, nah, maybe no, and he done that, right, that's fine. He was good with you, wasn't he, Paul Hartley? Ah, he was, he was uh-huh. great, he really was. And, and he, but he, he was good in a way that I think he pushed me as well. Like, well, even there were times when I'm thinking, I could be doing with my back. He kind of got in my head to say, nah, you need to keep training. You're fine, just get through Aye. it. Uh-huh. And, and that helped me because I hadn't had that. Mm-hmm. And I always, you, always as a back injury, people would say, nah, it's like, Stop then as soon as it's there but with Paul Paul would say Ge- try it again Yeah. and mentally it helped me getting through that and doing all the work so his training was good Hartley as well wasn't it aye uh-huh, like he's training it, was good. Uh-huh, it was good a lot of came for Gordon's yeah and like you love working with Gordon um, and it was hard and a lot of the, the runs could Gordon run yeah. Gordon, they were Gordon runs and they were, they were horrible and our boys are doing them as well but it got fit and I, could, I can remember that the first time feeling alright was in Hungary when we played an 11 v 11 I think it was wee whitey me. So I'm like that, and I, I could keep up with him. And I'm going, last year I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I felt good, played all the games, and just, just kept going. And I think I had an alright season, and it, it was mere. It, it wasn't to prove people wrong like in terms of MD at Hibs, because I think they knew that I did everything. They knew yeah. I was struggling, like, and because it was well documented, I was going for injections and I was trying to get through. And I was being stupid at times, I was playing when I wasn't fit. Uh-huh. And they knew that. and it was daft for me, but at Dundee I was fit and I just wanted to keep playing, but I kind of proved to my dad that, look, I've got another couple of seasons here in me, and with my back I did, mm. but then I can get a daft knee done. Yeah. So, yeah. But no, the back's fine, like, in that second surgery's something I wish I'd have done early, mm-hmm. and I think my time at Hibs would have ended a lot better, but 
Who's who? Who, uh, who impressed you at Dundee? Greg Stewart for me was no, top was player. tremendous, wasn't he? Top player. Um, come in and he did everything. Eh? Like, How good was his chops? Man? He was uh, so he was yeah, a fat I hated chopper. Him, wasn't I it? hated him. Like he'd date and date again. And uh-huh. Him and Gowser. I remember Gowser spun me one day, I think, and he nearly went into the ground and everybody was laughing. And it's, you know, nobody did. Remember when he's, when he's turning, he'll uh-huh. turn. he's not even doing it fast, I know. but you don't know what he's doing. And it was a, a free team game, and I could hear everybody laughing. He got, and I'm, I'm getting annoyed, and I actually might have run away. And I just smashed him. Smashed, I remember. <laughs> he's going, oh, why the fuck are you doing? I'm going, oh, come on, man. <laughs> See, just on used to, like, it was a love hate relationship, wasn't it? Fighting all the time at the best pals. Aye, no, I was like, just I think I, I took to him right away because we were for the same area, but we had never really met. Um, and first day I took him in and just talking away to him, and I, think, I like him. And this was me thinking, I said, I like him, and drop my mouth and whatever. So, and then with the band, I'm seeing you using that and kind of getting involved in it, and it was good. And then just it, it's just so easy to wind up. This was me as a, I'm talking about me as a player. Um, it's obviously a different relationship now. Like just some of the stuff, car, the car schools were brilliant. Uh-huh. Like some of the Great banner, boys, mate. Great boys have done it, there. Uh-huh. And that helped. It, everybody says, oh, they're travelling to Dundee. Well, I've done it for six years now. Mm. And, and That's, that was the best times, mate, in the motor. Brilliant, man. Funny. The Jeep, you had big Jeeps, like, doing daft things. And, oh, Jeeps, he, like, he was a nightmare. And, and, and like, he'd be sitting in the back seat of the motor, <laughs> get the windy done. Red hot day, everybody's got their windies done. Do you see me scoot the motor in front? Water through the windy, windy back up. The <laughs> boy turning around, good guys are sitting like that, steering straight forward so that the boy doesn't shout at him. The boy. He's scooting Grown people. men, man, scooting people. <laughs> scooting people with water. Go on, another one, the police pull me, we're driving to training. Gaz Evans driving, I think Nicky was. We had that free free level thing at the time. Uh, so you did, uh, <laughs> and me and Gowser are in, in the back fighting. Jeebs is a ref. And <laughs> the pole is pole is there. And come up and the, the guys out the motor. That's where we're, we're just by Perth. What's happening? Guys say nothing how she's there's, there's two boys fighting <laughs> at the back of your motor. <laughs> the guys are saying, nah, they're, they're only carrying on. So they come out and they say we Nicky Low. We Nicky's sitting and he says, Did you hear your seatbelt on? We Nicky, aye. You know what we Nicky's? <laughs> we green it no, no, you never. Stop being dicky. I've stop, stop being arsey about it. You never had your seatbelt on. We Nicky done. Aye, I did. You never had your seatbelt on. I'm, if you say it again, I'll find you. Nicky done. Right, alright. So, and it's the police that they were alright in the end, but all that boys. Well, he's look like grown men, but he's then. So that was it, right? And Jeeps, he's laughing and I'm going, I'm sitting. So it's the motor pulls away. I'm going, at this point, we had two bands. I'm going, I'm going I'm a father of two. I'm 32 year old and I've just been pulled out for the police for fighting, carrying on fighting in the back of a motor on my way to work. <laughs> and I think for the end, I said to Gowser, we need to stop it. Mate, you used to fight for like an hour in the back of the motor. No, it was to submit. It was to see who could get... Submit? Aye. Oh, no. <laughs> submit. Or... James was always a ref. It was either, either submit or get the he other did, person. Aye. <laughs> Oh, bro, Wait, can you man. imagine the people driving by? Because like, Gowser's probably quite well known, eh? Uh-huh. Like, Polis. Pe- no, like, <laughs> like, people would know him like, through football uh-huh. and, like, and cause all these things. And can you imagine people, every motor driving by, because I had his head out the window every day. Let's pull my gown's head down out the window. <laughs> Amazing, man. And since you became a manager, you want to tell the Alamo story? But see, for you, though, what, 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 uh, what, a school and for your first year as a manager to try and deal with the personalities that you've got at Dundee it's good for you to it? it's a good learning experience aye but look I think I've been lucky in a serious note because and this is where I think Paul and Neil McCann really did help me when I got injured look Paul Paul took me on a pre-season trip and told me like the day before I think oh, he's taking me for a jolly because he feels sorry he told me you're going to be taking some sessions so I'm taking like the defenders some wee drills uh huh and I was taking Gowser for a finishing session, stuff like that. Uh, it was to Austria, sorry. So, and I'm going, stuff like that. So, and then when Neil came in, I was under 18's coach at the time, and I went in and I says to Neil, what do you want me to do? And he says, look, go and find out about what you like as coaching, what you like, make mistakes, go and do stuff, come to me with anything. I kept calling him Gaffer. He kept, you need to stop calling me Gaffer, you're no part of my staff, call me Terry. I could never get to it. Terry McGann. I could never. And I think eventually just accepted it. But he, but he, it was completely different. My Paul kind of had me on the bench, which was 
folk probably thought it was weird, but Paul, Paul was having me on the bench and I was, but he was saying to me, but you need to use it as a coach. Don't be sitting as a player and saying he should be, have it in your seat. Like, have it is, what would you be doing now if you were a, a coach? coach? I, I was a coach at the night, White and scored to relegate United. Yeah. A coach when Rangers battered Dundee at Ibrox. Like, no, I wasn't a coach, but I was sitting there with the coach you see done. Yeah. And I went, Good you, experience. Don't, you don't get that no. experience. So, and then when I got the 18s in reserves, I was taking them and Neil just said, go and, go and do it and come to me with anything. And I went to him and Neil and Gartz, honestly, they were, they were great with me like for what for what they allowed me to do. Mm. And then Neil had me watching games, going and watching players. And he was he was really good in that. Like He just let me, like, he would come to all the games, but he would let me kind of take the team top, the, the reserve games, I mean. Or the, mm. Would and you then, watch your coach jazz and like give you pointers, isn't it? Aye, wee bits and pieces, but a lot of the time they'd be training, but like, no, what he always done, like, it, it was, I thought it was brilliant. Like, he always asked me, Neil knew every player, like, and he would always say, right, how's Finn doing? How's Lyle doing? And, and I've already given <clears throat> like myself credit for putting Finn in. And to be fair, I think it wasn't too much of a risk because I'd worked with him, I'd played with him. But Neil, I phoned the SFA when they were 15 to see if they could play in the Betfred, him and Lyle, to see if they could play in the Betfred Cup against Brecon. Or in, in, or if it was a friendly or the Betfred Cup, I think yeah. it was the Betfred Cup against either Brecon or Cowden Beef when they were 15. And they said no. So Neil was going to play them. When they were fifteen, was he genuinely? So, and I don't know, and I don't know if he's ever said that. He probably wouldn't want to come out and say yeah. that. But he, I, I made the phone call, so I know that's true. And so that, but I had seen, I had seen them when they were fourteen. But he'd always be asking me, right, who would you send there? And it'd be that buying, right? Why, why would you, who would you have on the bench? And like, it was two completely different interests like, that I had. Like, I wasn't kind of close to Neil in terms of what he was doing with the first team. But he took a real interest in what I was doing with the 18s and yeah. was asking my opinion with them. Where Paul was mere, like, what do you think with the first team and trying to help me with the first team? Yeah. But we knew he, he just come to me with stuff. And because of that, the one thing I did have to do was take myself away from the players. Mm. So I, Is that hard to hear? It was because I loved the dressing room. Yeah. But it was Neil says to me, like, you're not a coach, you, you get changed in the coaches room. Mm. And you come in and you have a wee meeting, you do this and... At the start, that was tough because, and I still went in and had the wee bit of banter, and and then like things were happening, and, and I was finding myself that I can't get involved in this banter anymore. Uh -huh. Because setting fire at we come in, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It, no the, the, I think the penny did drop when it was me and Gowser because they had something, something happened that broke in the gym. Something got broken in the gym, and Neil made a big thing about it, and he was right because. Players were messing about, and so he says, "Look, come on, lads, professional, blah, blah." And he, he, that's why he, he, he was—he was really professional, and he's working and all that, and the stuff in the gym, and like, everything was done right. I thought, um, and the next about two days later, I'm seeing Lorraine, like, Lorraine's room, got the fluorescent lights. Uh -huh. Me and Gowser were playing throat, like, so like for there, there across, a ball, a fiver, like so, free, free, free lives. Throw the ball, so you can throw it as hard as you want to catch it if you dropped it. So if you dropped uh -huh. it three times, it's a fiver. And he, he, he flung it and it was too high and I was raging with him. And I flung it and out the door and hurt the light and broke the light. And uh -huh. I was a coach. Uh -huh. I'm going on, no man. So I had to go and jab his door and say, look, gaffer. Uh, probably. He's like, it's Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It's going to be gaffer. No, it's gaffer. He <laughs> done, what is it? I done, I've just broke a light out there. He's like, what do you mean? She's like, it's my fault, I was fucking about it. Jazz, I've just said that. That oh. meeting with the person, I know I'm sorry, and to be fair, he was good. And then, it was then I kind of thought, I, I need to get as much away from this as I can. Mm -hmm. I still found myself, like, at times, getting caught up. But people were, Lorraine was good with me, like, at times would say, big what? Well, I had a different class, having about the place, but Lorraine would say, Jazz, you can't do that. Mm. And it, it took me a while to, come am how can I not do it? Like, not doing any harm. Yeah. But, I, it took me a while to get to the other side and then eventually it go it and but it was still because I, I then I, I travelled up myself so I got away from the car schools and that was hard uh -huh. I missed that yeah, and it's tough mate travelling up there on your own every day yeah you know like, I come up with Dave and Jimmy and that and we get wee quizzes and that going so it's back to like we've got a wee car school but right. and we do some work in the motor and that but. quickly on the manager's job like so McIntyre moved on when, when did you first hear that the club wanted you to do it? the next day what, phone call? Aye, uh, John phoned me, I think it was a Sunday. It was either the Sunday or the... No, it was a Sunday. Aye, John phoned me. 
obviously I just heard the news. Like I, we got a text, I think, through Eric, the club secretary, saying like the manager's been relieved of his duties, whatever, blah blah blah. Um, and then John phoned me and just says, "Look, would would you take the team for next week?" No hesitation there. No, oh, like I said, yeah. I'd love to. Um, delighted. This is John. The boys are after the morrow. That's the only thing. Um, they think they been gave. Is it game the following Sunday? I can't remember, but whatever week came, I said, I don't want to change that and phone all the boys, so you're all right, aye, that's fine. So she says, just do whatever you want for the week, build up, play, go and play whatever way you want to play. I says, John, I've got a couple of kids that I'd love to play. Um, I says, do what you want to do. See, I interrupt you. I want to play kids, but were you not thinking, I want to play the my best player so I've got a chance of getting the job? Or were you want to show that I can do like a full long-term plan for this club, play young players, bring them through? Was, that, was there any planning in that? Knowing the just... phone call. Right. Knowing the phone call, but when I got into the club the next day, like, cause I, think, I thought Finn, like, I, I, I played him because I thought he, he could handle it. And he proved that he was yeah. brilliant um, in the game. And if Darren hadn't got sent off, then Lyle Cameron would have made his debut that day as well. So he was just unlucky. Mm -hmm. The three of them would have made their debut. Um, but I wasn't thinking like that. I just thought, look, he could play. No, but what, what when I went in on the Monday and I sat down and I done I then again and I go I didn't get into the manager's office, it wasn't mine, I went into the, the wee coaching office and I sat down and I went through the stuff and I went, Who could play with who and who could do this? And then I'm going to St. Mirren are playing Hamilton and the playoff or whatever it was. In a league game, the last yeah. league game. So I'm phoning Dave and Dave was working with Aberdeen at the time. We did working for Dell and Sweet Dave's and great. Dave McKay was. Aye, was he? Huh? he right. was doing like match reports and stuff. Right. So I had asked Dave, can you come to this game with me and do a bit for me? Because I don't know what to do. And he phoned Dell and brilliant for Dell. Dell let him do it. And so he came, Dave. And so I'm then going and watching St. Mirren for Dundee. And for, but for me, because yeah. I'd done it for Neil uh -huh. to go and watch. And I went, Phew. I was saying to Dave, right, but how do you think we can do it? Can we do hearing that? And Gaz Irvin was here and having these wee conversations in the motor. And it was then, I think, I thought, you know That's what? That, isn't it? I'm going, could, but I'd been out of first team football for yeah. three years, maybe, since injury. Uh -huh. I'd never, I'd sat on the bench, but I was never really, my input wasn't valuable as such to people. It was never changing people's opinions. It was maybe upsetting people the fact I was there mm. because maybe people thought, what the fuck's he doing sitting there when he's not a coach anyway? And, but Paul, Paul was genuinely trying to help me out yeah. in terms of injury and then Neil was doing the same. But when I got that bug for the first team, again I said, nah, like, I can't go back. Yeah. So it, I think it was about the Wednesday I, I sat with John and because all the other, like, to be fair, after after Neil left, I think it came out in the bookies that I had a chance of the job or something or it was tipped in the paper and I had no chance of the job. I'd coached for about a week or something. Mm. Um, and I'd... John had phoned me up, he says, look, I'm just giving you the cut. He said, you're never even considered for this. I says, that's fine. I said, I know that anyway. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be. I remember that phone call. So I, on a Wednesday, I think I I, phone, I met John. I says to him, John, see, just before we go any further, I says, just don't let me rule myself out of this. I says, see, even if you, you know right now that you don't want me for this job, don't let me rule yourself out. He says, fine. He never gave in away. Yeah. He says, all right, well, all right, what are you doing in training today? Something like that. Uh -huh. But I had to get it out there because I had a wee buzz. Like, no, I didn't know how it was going to go because yeah. it could have went terrible on the Saturday. Um, but I think the players, if you had asked it, they enjoyed the week. But it would, like, we had nothing to play for, but we did have something to play for because of our pride. Mm. Sounds daft, but the last You played game, well as well, didn't you? We were good on the day yeah. and we played for... 70 odd minutes with 10 men yeah. and like, seeing Darren devastated because he like, he felt he let me down like he had made. like Daz had been great all week for me helped me out being, Kenny Miller was great all week but you're, talk, you're talking about people there that were older than me Kenny anyway mm -hmm. more experience better careers better players by miles that I'm coming in and put Gowser different class the two Gowsers Ryan McGowan Paul McGowan Meeks all getting on at people when things weren't done right like for me, like, yeah. and the trait that I'm thinking, his team are good. Mm. Like, I haven't seen much of them because I'd been training away from them, like with the kids and yeah. like um, and, and we ended up, we picked a team and it unfortunately didn't win the game, but I think a lot of positives come out of it, particularly Finn. And I think the crowd scene. What you're bit, trying to do, huh? And just, they seen a bit of 
fight and passion what they want. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I hate to say that because you should see that all the time, and that's not what I get the players because they, they did have that all season. But they, just that day, I think they they went out and and they wanted they wanted for themselves as well to to give the fans something. It wasn't for me, but for themselves, they wanted to, the players wanted to give the fans a wee bit. How much of a buzz was that on the side for the first time? Amazing. Yeah, it was. I'm not going to lie. It was that's when, and even then after it, because I can remember. Tony Fitzpatrick, I met him because I'd done the bit with my dogs and said, because um, they kept asking me, you interested in the job and my answer was, I'll wait and see, and that was my answer. Like, no, no, I've not even thought about it. But I'd, I'd started having wee thoughts and Tony Fitzpatrick, who was the, one of, the chief executives at Man, he pulled me because he'd heard an interview. Uh-huh. I, he, he phoned me on the way home. He said, don't ever say that again. Because Tony was my youth coach at Livy. Right. He said, what do you mean? He said, don't ever rule yourself out of any job. He says, you've just ruled, you're, you're doing a great job, you've only been in it a week. And he, Tony was just talking me up. Like, yeah. but he'd obviously seen a Dundee team that looked like they were, they were playing for us and doing stuff and whatever. And, and he says that to me, he says, don't rule yourself out. I said, ah, Tony, I would just been, I had to say it. No, you didn't. You should have told him you want the job, you never know when you'll get another chance. I don't want to hear you saying that again. <laughs> and I thought, that was brilliant. Uh, and then, that's brilliant. To be fair, and said the same to him. I says, Gordon, see if I, because I had, me and Gordon's paths crossed through his grandson about three months before. Right. That his grandson was leaving Peterborough and Gordon phoned me and said, would he come? So we would be signing him and he's a good player and he's got a chance of getting in on the first team. He's in a Dundee, is he? He's out and loan at Brecon. Right. And he, he's doing well. So, but I phoned, I thought, who, 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 who can I phone here? So I phoned Gordon and I said, I think Gordon thought at the time, I said, Gordon, see if I had to get this job, would you help me? And... Did you? Huh? So it was you that kind of got Gordon tracking yeah, in? Well, I think the club were thinking that anyway. Right. Um, the club were thinking he's doing something because he's he's linked Connection to the club with anyway. Aye. But I, I, because I had been speaking to him anyway, and I, I thought I'm going to phone him up and just I says, would you help me? And he's, he's, he's I'm past all that. I, says, I'm, I think he thought I was me and we'd be my sister. <laughs> How can I ask Gordon <laughs> to be that? I said no, Gordon. I, I says no, but he says he says James, I'd help any young manager. He says anything you want. Pick up the phone, and I thought you know what. I, I had never really met him. Uh-huh. Played against his teams or whatever. Never met him. I did, don't even know if he knew me. Like, putting it that way. Probably and, never. And, and, I know nah, he probably, no, I probably <laughs> did. He. But like, and I, I thought I got into the conversation. We thought about, oh, you doing in Coventry? Oh, brilliant! And I had three years done there. It's great. A four year done it. So I was trying to throw things in, uh-huh. just in case he didn't know Get, me. Right. And and he, I don't know. Whatever you need, son. Pick the phone up. Blah blah blah. Um, so that was fine, because when he phoned me about his grandson, I could just have been any under-18 coach that he'd never even heard of. Yeah. But knowing Gordon now, he knows everybody. Uh-huh. He's that wise to the game. He's, he's, he, oh, and he still, he still knows everything, and he's still so engrossed in football that it's it's refreshing for yeah. somebody like him. That, Great to sit and listen to oh, Brilliant. Um, but so to him, I phoned another couple of people, and another one, Jack Ross, and Sunderland were playing, I think, I don't know who they played, I might but they were playing a playoff game the next day and Jack Ross spent an hour on the phone on a Friday night to me about an interview for the Dundee job like how to go about stuff what he say what he would suggest and I thought that like, it was the night before we played St Mum because I was, I was worried about the press and stuff or yeah. conscious of it they're going to ask me this or going, and find, you'll be able to find out who they were playing but they were playing either that night or the next night in a playoff game, for, he was a Sunderland manager at the time, to get out of the league. Uh-huh. I think it was with one of the first legs or second legs. And I'm sure it was against Portsmouth. Portsmouth it was, mate. Uh-huh. I remember uh-huh. watching it. And he spent an hour on the phone. And it's I came off the phone and went, look, there is some good people in football. Look for all the... And it wasn't even as if he had to rush off the phone. Yeah. And he'd, he'd done that. And loads of people, and their boys helped me. And I just... And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try. Uh-huh. How was it How was it interviewing for a job hard? I had never really done would you wear a collar and tie? I did, I, I turned yeah. up my suit. Um, I was, uh, but it maybe helped me a wee bit because I knew them. But I'd, I'd done, I'd spent a lot of time doing a presentation. Not, not like a big, but like what what I thought my plans were. Because you got you get asked what, how you're going to get where we want to be, who you want to sign, who you want to keep, all that stuff. And I spent a lot of time speaking to Andy Boyle about the fitness stuff and speaking to Gordon about all his stuff and... Just tap into anything I could, yeah. speaking to Jack, because Jack had done the same thing. And all those people were, were a real great help. Dave Mackay had been at Stirling, 
Dave and Gaz Irvin helped me all week that first week as well. So I, I had a lot of help um, with that. But, but getting in it, because the, the bookies had geared it to Jim Goodwin. So right. I'm turning up here going, and then got any chance of getting this chance job anyway. But then I, I was getting, I was hearing rumours that, but it's not even true. No, and I'm being honest, I didn't hear anything because of, people, because I'm within the club, I heard or I get tipped off. I didn't, because people were phoning me saying, "Tell us so we can get money on it." <laughs> like that. I, just, I wish I could tell you. Yeah. Not to get sorry about that phone call, mate. <laughs> not to get the money on it, but just so that I knew. Yeah. Just, and but no, they done it. It was a long process. And is think, it just one interview, Jazz? Is it two? Two, there was two. There was two. I, don't mind that. I had one with just myself, and then I had one with me and Jimmy. Jimmy Nickel? Mm hmm. Well, he would get you the job, mate, wouldn't he? Uh, well, they, they you could talk to you in And then I, I wanted to, 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 to talk about like, Dave and stuff as well, so putting all that in, and, and I think um, in the end, I, I got a phone call for John, and he says, Look, we're going to offer you the job. How good the feeling's that? Where were you in your house? I was in the motor. Um, See, when the phone call came through, did you know it was this was going to be? I knew it was one way or the other. Yeah. Um, because it was, I'd kind of had, and I wasn't, in, in, again, and people will probably think I'm talking shit, but I'm not. Like, I wasn't getting any inside information. Like, I didn't know they'd done it. The, even to the, the point where I think we, Jim Thompson, wasn't even getting involved because he, he didn't want to be involved in a process where he knew me. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, and which I thought, I thought that was great for Jim in, in terms of that, which was, was killing me because I go on well with Jim and I'm thinking, I want him involved. But mm -hmm. Jim took himself out of whatever because of a conflict of interest. So the, the club done it properly. And when the phone went, I says, I know, I was in the car and I had the, the kids and I think they were screaming and I'm going, hi, John. And it was just, right, um, he says, son, did you get your suit ready or something? Going to offer you the job. And I said, oh, brilliant, blah, blah, blah. And he says, aye, right, when, when do you need me to come up? In the meantime, one of the kids is screaming in the background and he, he's like, just what, look, we're offering you the job for me when you're back in the house. I can hear you're in the car with the kids and and just get back to the house, phoned them and that was kind of it then and away we went. Amazing. And how have you found it, first season of management, enjoying it? Yeah, really enjoying it. It's, look, it's tough. Yeah. It is, it's, it's... What's the toughest part? Getting beat. Yeah. Um... Dealing with dealing with that, yeah, probably, and finding a way not to take that home. That I think I'm getting better at. I think Gordon's helped me massively on that. Um, we've had a heavy one big heavy defeat that everybody knows about. Yeah, and he sat with me for two hours that night um, in my office and just sat and again he just I'll not tell his stories because it's not right for me to sit and tell you what Gordon was telling me. But he's talking about things in his career. Or things have went wrong and how he's handled it and the things he's not felt he's handled right and that would a bit maybe have been like getting home and being in a bad mood with Leslie and the kids or whatever yeah. what he's saying to me so I've been beat 6-2 off United my first derby devastated and he's like hey man look get somebody to watch your kids take your missus out for a meal go to the pictures uh -huh. I'm sitting going like is he being serious like cause should I not be going and watching the game game uh -huh. but he said and, 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 and he asked me do you need to do that, but what he's saying is go and process it in your because the one thing he says, he says you'll hurt, it's going to hurt you, mm -hmm. and that it'll hurt you every day. I think I'm getting better, um, but people it's tough, yeah. Um, all, all, all that, but they're getting beat, the press, or the, the stick for the fans, I think, is fine. Um, again, it's it can overwhelm you if you let it get to you, but. I think you've got to just it's you've got to be balanced with it when things are going right, you're getting loads of praise and, and whatever and, and when things aren't going going so right then they're going to criticise you and they've got a right because mm -hmm. they pay their and I, I, I I've come out and said this a lot that and loads of people have tried to trip me up with the fans being at dens and saying do they got on getting on the players back, is it is that make it harder for you as a manager, is it harder for the players to perform? Well, I don't buy into that. I've played there, you've played there. It's the same at every ground. If, yeah. if you're not getting the fans something to cheer, they're going to go on again, rightly so. So let, these let, guys want to go on and play at a higher level. They're going to need to deal right. with it. Uh -huh. And let, let's give the, let's give them something to be proud of. Yeah. No, we drew with Alwa, but we were. I think we, we just only 
five, six weeks ago, and it's the best atmosphere I've seen at Den since a derby years ago. Right. Like taking out the derbies. Uh -huh. And we drew up, we drew with Allah. Now we could have, I think we had something like 20 odd shots in goal, and it was just one of the nights, but they could see, and we were getting them excitement. They were, we were good football, good stuff, one of the night, and it's that's the team talk after the game when you go, I can't see anything. Yeah. There's nothing apart from like, own another night, you win that game comfortably. And Peter comes in and says the same thing, that the Allah goal has a Aye, so that that's fine, but we gave them. Now if we we could have beat Alo a one 0 and been rubbish, and they, they would have been burning. Uh -huh. So we need to find that balance where we're they, they're proud of us that as a club, the fans are getting behind us and they're buying into what we're doing. They're seeing the young ones coming through for the academy, which works, which is going on in there with Gordon on the way down is great. And then getting to first team level, can we get our young ones in? Can we get them playing? Can we get? Good football, but winning football, all that. So yeah. Then all that comes into your head, and you have to pick a team on a Saturday, and you just need to win. Because it's hard the championship as well. United have been relegated. It's took them what three or four years to get. Well, it looks like they're going to go back up this year, mm -hmm. but you know it's no, no. A lot of teams come down and they're flying straight away. You know, it's Hearts. a rebuilding job, isn't it? Hearts are, Hearts the, are the only team that done it. Then they got a fifteen point or whatever it was deduction. Yeah. They went down, um, and so they had planned for it. I think Heart, Ross County done it, but their managers had ten games and Charlton End of the season to plan for it. Rangers didn't get it at first time. Hibs took a while. Then the United have took a while. So look, that's not me saying we we're happy to take a while because we're not. We no. went out it, but we're we're realistic in how hard this league is as well. And we were not we were under no illusions at the start of how hard it was going to be. Yeah, we knew it. But and Gowser's come out and say that other players have come out and say that, that they've been surprised. But he's played in the Premier League all his life. Yeah. So he's maybe in a position to say he's been surprised with that league. But I'd seen enough of it to realise just how tough it was. And but I think the stuff we're doing, we're going in the right direction. I hope you stay, mate. All the best, Alabs. Love that. Cheers, Jack. Cheers, mate.